All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live here on this Saturday morning for some NASCAR Cup Series practice. Uh, 40 minutes this week for each Group A and Group B, so we're going to have quite a bit of action over the course of the next couple hours. Qualifying, obviously, on this stream as well will uh, shortly after practice begin and uh, we get to see who's going to start up front for tomorrow's Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas. First road course race of the NASCAR season in 2024 for the NASCAR Truck Xfinity and Cup Series. we got a lot of action set for you guys on this Saturday. Obviously, very early start time. Probably the earliest stream I think I've ever done on the channel. Again, 10 a.m. local time for me. If you're just waking up. Welcome in. Out on the West Coast, it's about 7 a.m. in the morning right now. Cup practice about to begin again at Coda this weekend. Uh, following our Cup Series practice, a qualifying stream, which is obviously starting right now, we will have the NASCAR Truck Series race beginning at 1.30, e uh, 1.30 Eastern today and then also... Uh, later on this evening, the NASCAR Xfinity Series will be racing at 5 p.m. Eastern. So a triple header of streaming here. A lot of action to go through around this nearly four-mile road course layout. You can watch the Fox Sports coverage on FS2. So again, Fox Sports 2 is where practice and qualifying is taking place right now. At 10.30, bottom of the hour, uh, they will switch practice from Fox Sports 2 to Fox Sports 1. So if you're watching live right now, you're wondering, hey, where can I actually see practice going on while I'm watching your stream? Fox Sports 2. And then at the bottom of the hour, it will be on Fox Sports 1 for the rest of the practice qualifying coverage. And then obviously the races today for the Truck and Xfinity Series will also be on FS1. Tomorrow's Cup Series uh, stream will begin at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So again, 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow afternoon will be our race coverage of the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda. Got a lot of things to spotlight, obviously, today. I really want to start with these practice of qualifying streams, kind of just breaking down how the season's gone uh, up to this point, kind of highlight that as action is going on on the track, and I'll keep you updated uh, with times as well as far as uh, who is towards the top of the speed charts and who is towards the bottom. We got our first cars on track right now for Group A. I believe Ty Gibbs is the very first car to hit the racetrack this week. Gibbs has had a very, very strong season uh, thus far coming out of the gate again, just his second year. Still looking for his first win. Won both stages last weekend at Bristol, getting his first two stage wins of the year. With that awesome point say, it actually moves him up three positions in the driver standings, and he's currently third overall, only seven points behind Kyle Larson and Martin Truex Jr., who are tied for the top spot in points right now. Uh, Ryan Blaney, after an abysmal week last week, very minimal stage points to finish outside the top 15, breaking his top five streak at three races. Drops backwards three spots. He went in as the points leader. Comes out fourth in the standings. And as mentioned, Larson and Truex at the very top right now. Larson with the tiebreaker because he has one win. Truex does not have a win yet in 2024. Uh, we'll get into other driver statistic categories as well here. Um, obviously, as those drivers are spotlighted over the course of the live commentary coverage. 20 turns around this, again, nearly four-mile road course layout at Circuit of the Americas. This is going to actually be the uh, fourth race at Coda already with the NASCAR Cup cars. Hard to believe that NASCAR has been going here for that long already, but... Again, this is the fourth year. 2021 was the first year, a rain race. So obviously, the last uh, Gen 6 year, and then the last two years have been taken over with the next-gen car at Circuit of the Americas. And, of course, that classic finish in 2022 with Chastain, Bowman, and Allmendinger on the final lap, all making contact, trading the lead back and forth. Uh, definitely one of the better road course finishes, I'd probably say, in NASCAR history. Definitely of the short uh, history that NASCAR's had at this racetrack. Yet to see anybody actually complete a lap of practice. We should have a raw feed of the actual leaderboard at some point in time. So again, I will be able to get the actual live leaderboard up for you guys at some point. It's not up for the moment, and I think that might be because nobody's completed a lap yet. Josh Sims standing in the garage with Alex Bowman. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is just kind of seeing how we stack up, what our race car is doing. 
Obviously, same tire, but a, a new rules package. So, trying to see how that's going to correlate to this racetrack. There's some sections that are paved, so hopefully our, our Ally 48 is fast on the truck, but if not, we'll go to work. Um, this is a, a long race for sure, a lot of comers and goers, and uh, just trying to see how our race car stacks up and what we need to be good on those long runs is, is going to be crucial. Appreciate your time, Alex. Mention Bowman was in the running for that race win in the final lap just a couple of seasons ago. Twenty twenty two. I mentioned forty minutes of practice. It's not forty minutes for each group. I guess it's only twenty minutes for each group. So very minimal laps are actually going to be ran here in practice by each team. I'd probably say anywhere in the ballpark between uh, five to eight laps for the most part uh, because a lot of these teams aren't probably going to run the full 20 minutes, probably come in, maybe make some adjustments, make a quick qualifying trim run, and go on from there. So it's going to be kind of difficult as far as long run pace, how much tire fall off there may be. We already have a spin on the racetrack. Ryan Priest has spun. Uh, hard to tell exactly what corner that may be. It looks like it's uh, right before turn 19. So it might have spun coming up off of 18. Second time, Priest has had a spin in practice the last several weeks, and he may be coming to pit road to get some new tires. Yeah, it just slipped out from underneath him. Didn't really get down on the curbing at all on the inside of that right-handed turn 18. Definitely got a little loose. Okay, that's that's what it is. I thought it was 40 minutes. I was confused when I saw 20 on the clock. So two 20-minute practice sessions for Group A and Group B. So 20-minute uh, practice session for Group A, then Group B will go out for 20 minutes, and then another 20 minutes will be added for Group A and Group B after the fact. Um, qualifying, uh, each group gets 15 minutes for qualifying, so they get the two 20-minute practice sessions followed by qualifying after practice is concluded. And there will be 15 minutes for each group to qualify to set their fastest lap. Again, group qualifying is for all road course races this season. Final group will have a five-minute stint of the fastest 10. Again, uh, just like what we usually see, the fastest five from group A and group B. And qualifying will have a shot to go for the pole uh, in a second five-minute session. Ty Gibbs is the fastest right now in Group A. 19 cars are on the racetrack. The 19 cars that are on the track right now would include Gibbs, who is, again, at the top. Two-minute, 12-second uh, lap time for him. Kyle Busch, second. He's had some good runs at Coda uh, so far in the young track history in the Cup Series. Ryan Blaney's in this group. Chris Buescher, Tyler Reddick, Bubba Wallace, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Todd Gillen, A.J. Allmendinger in the 13 car this weekend. Uh, John Nemechek, Zane Smith, Ryan Brees, Eric Jones, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, Corey LaJoy, uh, Carson Hosevar, and Shane Van Gisbergen is back again this weekend. And uh, Shane Van Gisbergen is actually in the colleague racing, entering the 16 car. So if you're wondering why Allmendinger is in the 13, that is because SVG is in the 16 and uh, congrats also to Shane Van Gisbergen for being fastest in Xfinity Series practice that uh, had taken place already this weekend. So Xfinity Series practice, uh, Shane Van Gisbergen was fastest, had the fastest five-lap average as well uh, in his practice session. Didn't look beyond that to see if anybody was able to get a 10-plus lap run, but um, looks fast. Qualified on the front row will be starting second, Kyle Larson, who is going to be a cup regular in that Xfinity Series race later today at Coda was the driver who qualified on the pole. Newcomer at the top of the charts, another Toyota, Bubba Wallace. That didn't last for very long because now A.J. Allmendinger is at the top. Everybody pretty much in that 2 minute to 12 to 2 minute to 14 second lap time barrier uh, for right now. First ad break it looks like on practice. For this moment. Now, I don't know why there's no raw feed. Well, I know why. It's because this website sucks when it comes to Cup Series raw feeds. Uh, we haven't had any issues with it for practice or qualifying yet this season. Not really anything I can do specifically other than constantly refresh the page, log out, log back in. So we do have a couple of non-chartered entries, obviously, racing this weekend. 
Uh, we'll look at that entry list here while they're under the commercial break. If I could find it. I'd have to go to Coda Results. Oh, there we go. Uh, the raw feed is now working. I'll get that up for you guys in a couple seconds. Look at the uh, entry list for this weekend here first. I believe the only other non-chartered entry this weekend other than AJ Allmendinger is Jimmy Johnson. If I do state so correctly. Uh, no, actually, sorry. Timmy, uh, Timmy Hill. Timmy Hill in the 66 for MBM going to make his first start of the season. Then uh, Kamui Kobayashi is going to be running as well this weekend, and he will be in the 2311 Toyota. So three non-chartered entries this weekend. Again, uh, Kamui Kobayashi in a third entry for 2311 Racing. Timmy Hill for Business Motorsports. And then AJ Allmendinger in the 13 car which is an extra colleague entry ride. And that 16 car, obviously, that Shane Van Gisbergen is in is a chartered entry car, but they don't have a full-time Cup Series driver in that car this season. So uh, Ty Gibbs trading back and forth with lap times with A.J. Allmendinger at the top of the leaderboard. I do like Gibbs' chances of winning this weekend, to be completely honest. If he sets a good qualifying lap this weekend, the speed the Toyotas have had, and Gibbs has been off to a hot start, been knocking on the door, led a lot of laps last week. Won a couple stages. I do like Ty Gibbs getting his first career win this weekend. Got his first career Xfinity win on a road course at Daytona uh, back in 2021 as well in his first start there. So he is a pretty good road course racer. And the Toyotas overall have just had a lot of speed this season, uh, not just Ty Gibbs. Uh, Tyler Reddick went for a spin here in practice just a couple moments ago, and that has put us under a caution for the first time today so caution is out saw a spin on the racetrack uh from the 41 of ryan priest and now tyler reddick and this reddick spin is going to bring out a caution ross chastain is uh getting ready for an interview here on pit road Uh, Gibbs is fastest lap time now into the 2 minute 11 second time barrier for him. And about a tenth of a second quicker than Allmendinger. Nobody has ran more than 3 or 4 laps so far. Uh, Ryan Priest ran just the 1, was spinning out. 2 laps for Eric Jones, but yeah, everybody else has ran 3 or 4 laps so far in practice. I don't know why it has Michael McDowell on this list. Uh, he is not set to run any laps in this group. I don't believe, unless he is. And he's just choosing not to. Not sure on that. Silent Al Scribe, uh, Zavi Dero Racer, Aaron Quintrell, Billy Kramer, Elaine Lima. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully I pronounce everybody's name correctly. <laughs> Some of you, obviously, uh, regulars of the channel. Thanks for tuning in again this weekend. Going to have tire problems at Coda this weekend. Don't think so. Uh, they, they do have a new package, but 
No, you're not going to see what you saw last week, this weekend. Honestly, I don't expect there to be a whole lot of tire fall off this weekend either. I mean, it, based off the road courses last year, there was like hardly any tire where um, I can remember Ryan Blaney like only changing tires one time at Indy, if I remember correctly. It was either last year or the year before that. Uh, there was like no tire where he only changed tires once. And if he didn't get turned on a late race restart, I think he still would have ended up with a top five finish just because he didn't pit as often as everybody else. I don't know if it's going to be quite that uh, better. They did repave certain areas of this racetrack, so you may see even less tire fall off uh, Coda this week than what we might have seen the last couple of years with the next gen at this racetrack. Jackson Thomas, thanks for tuning into the stream as well. We're up to 15 likes on the stream. Our goal is usually 50. We got an extra 40 minutes of practice today, 20 minutes for each group. So the stream is going to be a little bit longer than usual for the practice of qualifying streams throughout the rest of the season. And maybe some of the other road courses will be like this uh, as well. But obviously this being the longest course on the NASCAR circuit is the reason why uh, they have added the additional 20 minutes. Well, Corey LaJoy going for a slide. Here's Corey LaJoy. Getting a bit loose there. Uh -oh. Ryan Blaney will break lock up here. Yeah, the right front. That's uh, That probably happens because when you come up that hill into turn one, there's a lot of bumps right there, and the tire will actually get light. That's You have to modulate the brake pressure to keep the, to keep the front tire, the right front tire from sliding. Usually don't see that on that outside wheel though, where the, the you know natural weight is transferred over to that wheel. Yeah, it's definitely rough going into turn one. So you know, they've, they've obviously worked on it a little bit. You can see as they go in there, there's some grind marks that that have tried to address that bump, but still there, obviously. Now the, the uh, out of bounds rule only applies from turns three to six. Three, the S's uh, coming off turn number one. There is a look at that area, and you drive from left to right here. If you get below the red and white line that delineates the edge of the track, four wheels underneath that, then that lap is disallowed in practice or qualifying, and there can be a penalty in the race. Here's Ryan Priest. This was very early, first or second lap that he had on the track. And you see all four wheels in the green. Green is not good. Green is not good. And, and it's it's a, uh, there's a lot of speed through these S's to cut it as close as possible to make sure that you get it as tight as possible. Well, that's a great shot right there. Sorry to interrupt, but you can see exactly on that corner right there, those guys uh, just barely putting that inside wheel on it. These S's are diabolical. Most racetracks that have S's, you can develop a rhythm to work your way through them. But here, the radius of each of the turns in the S's decreases as you go through them. Your exit speed is slower than your entry speed, and that's got to be frustrating to deal with. Yeah, you actually come down the hill and downshift into this section right here. And as you downshift, you're kind of modulating the, the power and the brake to just modulate the speed to keep it up to where you think it needs to be. And like you say, it's difficult because you just keep going slower and slower as you get through the corner, through the S's. Actually, I see where they've been in the dirt. That turn eight right there just keeps getting choked out more and more as the laps go by. Turn 11, very important corner right here. New asphalt, as you see, coming off the corner right here. The reason that, that corner is important is because that sets up this massively long 175 mile an hour straightaway into Dive Bomb City Turn 12. There was a book written in the late 60s by Alan Johnson, an SCCA champ, and it was called Driving in Competition. And probably the biggest line in that whole book that I took to heart is the most important corner on any racetrack is the corner that leads on to the longest straightaway. Do they have that in an audio book? I'll see if I can find it for you, Clint. <laughs> but that still that that still holds true today for a variety of reasons and holds true here now for sure without a doubt how about your boy here on board with uh svg and 
This is kind of a rhythm section here through 17, 18. Uh oh, got Kyle Bush around. Final minute of this first of two practice sessions for Drew Bay. Ben Giesberg up to uh, fourth on the board behind Gibbs, Almaninger, and Busher. Well, I haven't sat up here much, you guys, but we've seen some pretty good cars spin out today. Yeah, and so on the entry to that corner, Kyle was, was splitting that curve, and I would be willing to bet that it got got on that curve and just jerked it around sideways. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Now the whole back of the car was off the ground. Did you see that thing bounce, Glenn? You got to try it. This is the time to try these things. Yep. Two practice sessions. That happened because the back of the car was up off the ground in the corner before that. It just completely pitched the car offline. Now, teams have three sets of tires to use throughout the two practice sessions. So we'll see how that plays out as Group A in practice one is complete at Coda. Ty Gibbs actually ran the most laps and was the fastest overall through through Group A's first 20 minutes. Again, uh, there will be two separate practice sessions. You'll see the Group B drivers on our leaderboard mix in with the Group A drivers when they hit the track next for their first 20. Uh, but again, two 20-minute practice sessions for each group before we get into qualifying uh, through those same groups again here today. Ty Gibbs, fastest overall so far. AJ Allmendinger, eight tenths of a second behind him in second. Chris Buescher, third. Shane Van Gisbergen in his fourth. John Hunter Nemechek, fifth. Carson Hosevar, sixth. Ryan Blaney, seventh. Kyle Busch, eighth. Excuse me, Bubba Wallace, ninth. And Todd Gillen is tenth so far. So uh, Toyota up at the top, two of them in the top five. And we've seen about half of them hit the track uh, so far, another good road course race here, at least of uh, the younger crop of the Toyota drivers. Christopher Bell still has to hit the racetrack. Tyler Reddick uh, lacking behind there just a little bit. He had that spin, though, so he only ran three laps. Uh, a lot less than a lot of the other drivers had ran. And as you heard from Kevin Harvick on the broadcast, I have to agree with him. We have seen a lot of spins already uh, in practice today. So, again, those repaid sections of the racetrack... Uh, definitely throwing some fits for these drivers and handling is looking like it may be more of an issue here today than what we have seen in the first couple years with the next gen car road courses. And I would also say that having this new package on top of that is definitely not helping uh, as far as the drivers trying to adapt quickly. Trying to find that edge here early is what I'm gathering out of that. If they go for a spin, there's a lot of runoff area. They probably don't have to worry about having some sort of an issue so you know go for broke here and practice find that limit so that way when the race uh comes tomorrow you can settle in a little bit better santiago kid uh Reese cup thanks for tuning in thank you for providing the content on the road uh found you to help me stay locked in this weekend hey thanks man appreciate you tun tuning in even uh when you're not in the comfort of your own home appreciate it leonardo thanks for tuning in greetings from brazil as well Looks like he's pulling for Alex Bowman. Bowman's career best road course finish, second. And that was at Coda a couple years ago. Group B drivers are strapped in, getting ready to go and uh, hit this racetrack. This year. Let's go back and look again at the Kyle Bush. Watch when he gets those left sides way off track and up on the red painted surface, which is not very smooth. Yeah, this definitely shows you this is just one section of the racetrack that is really rough, and you, you have to make sure your car is handling these bumps well and put the car in the right spot. But the whole back tire is off the ground right there and completely throws Kyle Bush offline. Um, this practice session is, is unique because of the fact that. You're able to have more tires. You're able to really push the limits. It's okay to slide a tire. It's okay to go off track. It's okay to spin out. And guess what, Clint? They've done all of that. That's as many cars as I, I remember spinning out. That was just our first practice. So this is the second group. All these guys have learned something, been watching uh, what, what has happened with their, with their teammates and different 
sections of the racetrack. They've all prepared on the simulator. They know the differences in, in what the other guys have said from their simulator sessions to what happened on the racetrack, whether the ride's rough or uh, this corner's got more grip, less grip. So that progression from team to team and driver to driver is going to progress into this second session, and that'll happen again when they go back to Group A and B in the, in the next session towards qualifying as well. So this, this should get more and more competitive as we go through each session. All right, bonus points for decaling the wiper blade. I love it. Yeah, why not? You know, <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get your message that out was, there. That was some <laughs> low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Michael McDowell has a lot of road race experience. You could probably put peg him as one of the ringers here. And I would put him in the category of, of being in contention this weekend. He got tired of waiting around for everybody else, lolly lollygagging around, said, I gotta go, boys. We're going down the back straightaway. Long, long straightaway from a level oh, towards the yellow. Oh, the green top of the hill, turn one. Oh bother. And that's <laughs> I'd say those other guys had that information. Oh, got the old wrench laying on the racetrack. And that's frustrating here. Somebody forgot that wrench on the deck lid of the car. <laughs> that's a big wrench, too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's like yes. a, about an inch and an eighth. All right, so uh, the track truck gets to do the drive of shame up there to turn one. And uh, it'll be the drive of shame what's when your, they bring it back to whatever team lost it. What's your guess on the size of that ridge? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you know, I'm gonna say you're pretty close, but yeah. I'm going to say a little. What do you think, Larry? One inch. I'm with Kevin. Seven eighths, one inch. Fifteen sixteenths. You guys are on. We need to find that ridge. Maybe an inch and a sixteenth. This is one of those times you wish as a team you didn't inscribe the tools. <laughs> exactly right. And they all do. Kabui Kobayashi making his second cup start. Uh, he ran the Indy Road Course last year for 2311 Racing. World Endurance Champ, Le Mans 24-Hour Champ, Daytona Rolex 24-Hour Champ, and he's raced in Formula One. It's a bad news, what you just said. Well, everything I've seen from him is he's really aggressive. Every time really? I watched him, watched him race an F1 car, so I, I would assume that he's going to push the limit to do what he has to do to, to go fast. It's just a matter of not making mistakes and keeping it on track. I love the fact that these guys want to be here, want to be in NASCAR. They want to challenge themselves. They want the challenge, and they come to NASCAR to find it. There's some big names, F1 drivers, world-class racers that have come to compete against our NASCAR drivers. So he's waiting on the timing line uh, till the track turned green, which it is, and then he'll be able to start a timed lap. Uh, Gazoo Racing, you read on his sleeve, that's the Toyota factory uh, racing arm in Japan. They make a lot of cool parts uh, for folks here in the U.S. too. The other thing that I like about these guys' op opportunities, right, is they find good opportunities. A lot of times when we had ringers back in our day, back in the day, right, these guys would be in somebody's backup car, maybe not necessarily the same equipment. These guys are ringers, and they're in fantastic equipment to boot. We'll keep a close eye on them as the day goes along. Now, after the commercial break, all the rest of cup practice and qualifying will switch over to FS1. So switch that dial, and we'll see you there. Cup practice at Circuit of the Americas. Now moving over to Fox Sports 1. There you have it again. Uh, Fox Sports 2 was taking the coverage and taking the reins for practice for the NASCAR Cup Series for the first half hour. Uh, we have hit that limit, so now, again, Fox Sports 1 will be carrying the rest of practice as well as qualifying for the NASCAR Cup Series here this morning. Uh, Ty Gibbs still at the top of the charts. We have yet to see a full lap ran by anybody in Group B, so definitely getting eaten into their time with the debris caution in Turn 1 just as the cars were leaving pit road and hitting the racetrack. Uh, as we wait for that time and its scoring to update, we will take our first ad break of this practice qualifying stream for the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda. Dave Marks, thanks for tuning into the stream as well. Wiper blade is everything, yeah. 
Appreciate uh, everybody tuning in here for a very early stream. Easy e Network, thanks for tuning in. Reddick Chase, a projected 1-2 finish. Well, Reddick has uh, won here before. He's the defending winner of this race. Nowhere to be found, at least at the very top of the charts for right now. He was outside the top 10 through Group A, and now we've got these Group B drivers heading the racetrack for the first time, and we'll have to see where they all end up ranking in. They were able to get a little bit more heat in their tires. Uh, I don't know how that's going to maybe affect their lap times. I would imagine it would probably help their first lap. Just kind of pacing the racetrack there for a little bit until the debris was picked up in turn one. Six tenths of a second, though, again, is the difference between Ty Gibbs's fastest time and Shane Van Gisbergen's fastest time, who were one and two at the top of the chart. Again, seven, eight laps ran was pretty much about the most for everybody in the first uh, first group. Some big name drivers. Last year's winner, Tyler Reddick, around backwards. Kyle Busch was one on that list. Ryan Priest, obviously, you just saw. So Group A has had a 20-minute practice session. We're now in Group B for 20 minutes. Then we will repeat with a second practice session group and then move to qualifying but right now the problem hasn't been staying on the racetrack it's been staying pointed in the right direction i think a lot of the guys are trying to figure out how much rear grip it has because there's a lot of momentum and roll speed and partial throttle and things that happen at this particular course and also the heights of their cars it's fast this morning it's nice and cool so there's going to be a lot of grip on on the racetrack and i think a lot of that what is happening is coming off the curves and it's getting on the rub blocks and making the back of the car light well, and I think they're pushing the limits, right? They have yep. three sets of tires. We have two practices for these guys. Those are situations that we haven't seen with these. So usually you go out there and you need to get out there, get in your rhythm, and more importantly, get old Larry Mack on that box a good tire reading, right? So a long runs. Having those three sets of tires changes that and how hard you can push to find that limit. All right, well, let's find out how Group A practice one went from one of the two fastest drivers. Here's Josh Sims. Yeah, Shane Ben Gisberg and one of those drivers out there trying to find the limit. Now getting set for your second or your third cup start. That is, but how does it feel out there? I know it's hard to hear me, but how does it feel out there? I, I don't know what you said. Six six is so loud, but um, with the second mile, it's really good. I'm just getting a bit more, getting better and better. But um, yeah, another practice, which is great. We'll try some things. We need to improve it, but yeah, it's so cool to be here. It's really fun. Appreciate your time, Shane. Got a chance to spend some time on the track walk with Shane yesterday. Did a piece that you'll see airing tomorrow. Uh, neat guy, Kevin. I know you have a lot of experience with him already. He was telling me how hard he's been leaning on you and how helpful you've been with your education, right? Your experience in this race, uh, this this form of racing. But world-class racer, has certainly accomplished so much in his career. And to be able to win that first race out, he's always forever going to be a favorite as long as he's on that racetrack. Yeah, and he's a student and way outside of his, his box as far as what he's been doing and, and just wants to learn how to oval race and do all the things that he needs to do to run the Xfinity car and the Cup car and, and has done a really good job but now he's in his wheelhouse here at Coda. He's raced before in the supercar and he's looking for a good weekend. Speaking of wheelhouse, you see Chastain right there in the track house car. Solid here. Always very solid. Teammate Suarez won his first race here a couple years ago. These boys need business and they have fast cars for him to be up front tomorrow when the time's right. Well, Ross definitely gave us one of the most exciting finishes that we've ever seen here when he uh, was involved in that last lap battle with Almendinger and, and Bowman. Gave him a little bumper, pushed him out of the way, and came in and uh, was able to get Trackhouse's first win. His teammate just ahead, Daniel Suarez, also has uh, quite a road racing background in his Native Mexico. Don got a win in the season, win in Atlanta, huge win for him. A lot of his uh, Daniel's amigos here this weekend. He tells me this is his home track. Always fun to come here. Right in front of family and friends and come watch you do what you do. So coming into the road courses, 
eight different drivers have won the last eight horse races in the Cup Series. And they come from six different organizations in the last six wins. Last first time winners in the Cup Series, the last four won on road courses. Well, we can go to the top of the charts to see who could that add their name to the list. Who could that be? Look for Ty Gibbs very fast already in that first group. So Group A drivers in yellow, Group B drivers in white. Group B is on track now. Eight and a half to go in their first of two practice sessions. Chasta and Larson and Kobayashi. Well, we talked about Kobayashi and, and like we mentioned on, on FS2, Denny Hamlin talking about how fast he was in the simulator and we know from his F1 past he's going to be very aggressive and these guys have a much better opportunity with this next gen car to come over here, race on courses and, and road courses that they're used to competing on and be competitive. Well, there's another one around, Ross Chastain pushing the limits. We saw Denny Hamlin spin in that same section in turn, turn 9 headed to 10 right there and, and that's going to be a, a tough section all day because, let's see what happened before I tell you why. Yeah, you see the back of that car bounce, and we saw that earlier with Kyle Busch, the back of the car actually came all the way off the ground. All right, so you're shortcutting the course to get a better line into and off of the corner, but when you shortcut it, the pavement there is not smooth, is the risk. Is the reward worth the risk? Well, the right side right there in, in turn eight has a trough basically on the inside, so you want to cut under that curve and almost hook the asphalt around right there to pull the car around. But if you miss, it, it hits the rub blocks over the curve, it's rough on that asphalt inside of the curve, and it hits the inside ground, it hits the other rub block, and it hits the back of the car bouncing around. And you, when you, when you come out of that ditch into the, into the racetrack again over the curve, it's just tough. Uh, to keep the car from bouncing all over the place. At the end of the day, you're straightening the curve out as much as possible all the way through the S's to eliminate um, as much as you can that lateral slide. Yeah. And that's where you'll get yourself in trouble. Yeah, you see Kyle Larson in this section that we're talking about, and as you hook that inside right there through that corner, it almost just pulls the car around and makes it loose, so, and it bounces at the same time. So it's all about timing and trying to keep that car in the right spot. Yeah, so as we, as we come into turn turn eight right here you're going to see Larson go over the curb where it hits the bottom and then as he ducks that right front off over the ledge clear into the dirt into the dirt and it's it's probably a six eight inch ledge right there on the inside and it's not just dirt there because uh you can put your right front on there's there's like an asphalt access there and bounce it up and over there like the jordan looking on so cool what a stud Chastain, Larson, Bowman, and Kobayashi, fastest in Group B. Ty Gibbs still the fastest overall. That gap between first and second is closed with these Group B drivers on the racetrack. Uh, Chastain, Larson, Bowman, and Kobayashi uh, all towards the top of Group B's practice. Christopher Bell also in there, so five of the top seven are on the track right now for Group B's first session. Again, each group gets two 20-minute sessions. This is the first session for Group B, so Group A cars will hit the track for their second 20-lap uh, session. They don't have to use the same tires. Again, three tires uh, through practice and qualifying today. So basically each practice or each time they're on the racetrack from practice to the next practice and then to qualifying they will have a new set of tires so that's why you see quite a few drivers uh spinning right now just trying to find uh that fine line of how hard they could actually push the race cars uh to the edge without losing control so that way they get settled in a little more for the race tomorrow uh bond 1771 thanks for tuning into the stream and uh thanks for everybody else uh, that is tuning in or has been tuned in rob lapopo thanks for tuning in pulling for svg it looks like he definitely has a good car this weekend, I will say. And looking like one of the favorites for the Xfinity race later as well. Maybe he'll uh, go two for two this weekend. That'd be insane. 30 likes on the stream already. Our goal is 50. So be sure to hit that like button if you guys haven't done so yet. And your top five through practice so far. Ty Gibbs in the uh, top spot. The 130.741. Average speed of about 93.896 miles per hour for one lap. 
Ross Chastain second, Kyle Larson third, Shane Van Gisbergen fourth, and Alex Bowman is currently in fifth. We'll take a quick little break and continue our live commentary coverage of Cup Series practice at Coda. Pre post qualifying practice each weekend. I mean, that's the way it used to be. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know that NASCAR is going to try to go to that anymore. Considering it's been like this for a while now. He should have NASCAR mobile so he doesn't have to be a minute behind the action on the track. I'm not necessarily a minute behind. Like, I'm watching on FS1. Unless you're talking about, like, you know, live timing, I guess, with everything with it. YouTube is the main delay here. YouTube's what ends up putting me about 30 seconds behind uh, what you guys are probably watching on your end and then listening to me. Yeah, this is coming in the middle. Next to last corner, Ross shoved that 16 car in there off the 48, gets the W. It was a, a bold move, but it put him in victory lane for the watermelon smash. And in his defense, he'd already been hit, so it was a fair game from that point. It was almost like a croquet shot, you know, yeah. where, where you hold the one ball and you hit the mallet and drive the other one. Have you ever played croquet? Oh, you sure. play croquet? Well, I, that, that sport timed out by the time we came around, Mike. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just a flesh wound. I'm going to get, I don't even know what social media right now. There would be some croquet guys, the theories. No, they're on FS2. Michael McDowell. Rolling along here. He is uh, 16th overall. Good road racer. Always aggressive, too. You want to talk about some of them dive bombs and moving people out of the way? He's the His king. will do it. He's, he's the king of dive bomb. Yeah, you saw him reach up and adjust the brake bias up above the shifter right there on the dash. Heading into that passing zone into turn 12. New asphalt down there. Kind of a wedge right there in the middle of the corner that kind of drops down in elevation. The other thing I saw is how many downshifts. That shows you just how slow this part of the track is. One downshift, two downshift, three downshifts. Big short shift right there to keep the back tires from spinning. Lots of shifting at this racetrack. You guys are busy in these cars. You know, Kevin, I talked to your engineer this week over there at Stuart Haas Racing. He said 20 to 24 times a lap a driver will shift around this 3.4 miles. Yeah, it's a, it's a very busy lap. Right, here we go. Nice foot cam here. Watch his head. Well, which one is it, Kevin? I'm watching his feet, his head, his hands. I know it's busy. I know it's difficult for you to do two things at once, but you can watch both. Both on the screen. All right, here we go. Up the hill into turn one. This is a great corner as a driver. You see him a little bit off the off the curb there to try to miss some of that bump. Progressively out of the brake. In the middle of the racetrack, I like that, Clint, because that sets up turn two to get a straight shot and carry, carry as much speed from two to three so that you can get the car in the right spot to get through these S's. The reason I like when you said you direct our attention to it, not only his feet, obviously, but his head, is especially right now. Watch his head finding the apexes of the corners. Watch center of the corner. Watch his head. Oh, uh, missed, missed the curve. He didn't jump it. Didn't jump it hard enough. You can see him really look to the insides of those corners, looking to the next corner even. It's all about setting yourself up for the next corner in those S's. That's where the speed is. You miss one corner, the entrance of those S's, the whole thing is shot. Now let's talk track limits, which we did over on the FS2 show. But uh, here, the only place track limits come into play are in the S's, turns three to six. If you get inside, uh, the red and white track markers in those S's. If you're on the green, green is not good, and you will be penalized. As Group B, practice one is over. Chastain, Byron, Larson, and Bell, top of the board. All right, so uh, Group A and Group B now have each had 20 minutes of track time. They will have an additional 20 minutes to extend practice this weekend due to the long circuit. 
And uh, then we will get into qualifying there right after the fact. Don't mind having the steering wheel on the wrong side, but the H pattern shifter on the wrong side would be nuts. Yeah, and it's insane how quickly he's been able to adapt to that. Uh, talk about SVG, obviously, coming from uh, a world of racing where it was complete opposite. And probably his whole upbringing was complete opposite as well. So, yeah, it's uh, mind boggling to say the least that he is able to not only adapt, but be better than everybody else at doing it. Watch a race live sometimes. Uh, what's on YouTube is behind. Probably YouTube that caused it. Yeah, it is. I mean, I've, I'm seeing everything the same time you guys are, but by the time like, I actually talk about it, it's after after the fact. Like You guys aren't hearing me like right as I'm speaking, and it's not direct output to your ears necessarily. That would be the difference between this and the TV business. All right, so uh, before we get into our next practice session, we'll take a quick break here, continue the live commentary coverage of the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix practice at Circuit of the Americas. Top 10 for Bowman so far, eighth place. Yep, showing good speed. Uh, quite a few Hendrick cars are uh, Chase Elliott lacking behind a little bit. 18th right now. Remember, he did not run Coda last season too, so with the very few... Races at this racetrack with the next-gen car, two of them. Uh, he was only in part with one. So you'd have to imagine that that would factor in a little bit to a potential lack of success this weekend, but we'll see. He did win the first Coda race here, but that was with the Gen 6 car. And he has actually not won a road course race in the next-gen era uh, was considered by many, including myself, as the king of the road courses in the Cup Series there in uh, the later point of the Gen 6 era, all nearly unbeatable on road courses anywhere we went, new or old, and not the case anymore. We'll see if he can get that first road course win with the next-gen car this season. Shout-out to Kamui Kobayashi hanging on in the top 10 as well, 10th uh, passes. On the leaderboard, top 10 through the first 20 minutes for each group. Ty Gibbs, fastest. Ross Chastain, second. William Byron, third. Kyle Larson, fourth. Shane Van Gisbergen in fifth. Daniel Suarez in sixth. Austin Sindrick, seventh. Chris Bell eighth. Alex Bowman, ninth. Kamui Kobayashi, tenth. Six of his eight laps run. Ross Chastain's third of eight laps was his fastest, and he led to group B. Turn 19, Daniel Suarez. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of these guys are, are figuring out that maybe that roll speed and, and that lean on the to be able to lean on the back of the car is is a little bit less than probably what they expected in, in some of those corners. And that tire chatter has when the car starts to slide and chatter the tires, there's less room to save it than it, than it seems like they might have been accustomed to in the past. All right, as in the first session, Ty Gibbs leads them out on the track for practice for uh, Group A. Practice two. Yeah, let's let's talk about this first corner right here, Clint. We see this grind mark that you had have, have pointed out here uh, going across the racetrack. But what we've seen over on, on this side of the track, on the right side over here, we've seen a lot of guys move over move over this way on entry um, a little before this patch to try to stay out of some of those bumps to keep that right front tire from locking up. So it's a it's there's have been these have been big lockups and, and stuff that would damage the tire. Well, you see that elevation change that you were talking about in the challenge within, within the plateau. That's pretty extreme. It is pretty extreme, and that's one reason why it's such a cool corner. You see the tower there is 251 feet, but 134 feet in elevation into turn one. And the hardest thing as a driver is to drive it in there further because you have that hill to lean on to help slow you down and the car to really compress in, into that hill so it allows you to be really aggressive on the brakes. But the limiting factor going up that hill into turn one, if the car is all the way to the right next to the curbs, is the, the, the tires and the car movement and the tire getting light and locking up. Well, that's going up the hill. Then you get up there and it plateaus. There's a tabletop on the top of there. And oh, oh, there it is right there. You kind of look, 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 blind corner. Boom, there it is right there. Make an adjustment. They were riding with, with Ty Gibbs through the, I guess you'd call it the stadium section. Yeah, 13 and 14 here. 
and you can follow along on the track map at the top of the screen. We'll try to keep that up as much as possible. So now these guys have had a chance to be out on this racetrack, go back, debrief with their teams real quick, look at some data, smoke things over, and make some adjustments. I think business is going to pick up again in this practice session just because of that. And we're coming up on the, on the temporary start-finish line right here. That's where there'll be time for practice and qualifying. So we're going through 19 and 20, very rough out here in this extra section that they're using. You split the curve to get a nice turn in down the front straightaway so you can get a good exit out into the sticky paint to get you a nice run up off the corner. There are a couple of places where they're going even beyond the runoff area and into the dirt, and that could be problematic as the race wears on. Josh? Kyle Larson, one of the drivers that wrapped up the original pickup up falling out there on the track. Really hard to hear. Um, but no, my car felt really good, I thought, so I just about kind of piece together the whole lap. Um, I missed 19 and 20 out every lap. I've only got the DS to do it like one time, so it's, uh, it's hard. There's so many quarters here, it's easy to kind of get behind and lap time, so just kind of uh, figure all that out, and, and like I said, it's all together. I feel good, feel good about the balance, so. Let's go. I think one of the best in the business telling you how hard it is. He's missed 19 to 20 every single time, and he's still, what, fourth on the sheet overall, so he gets that smoothed out. Look out for Kyle Larson. AJ Allmendinger. Now watch this turn 19. It's a 90-degree left-hand corner, but you want more asphalt than is there, so you get out way out here, and at the end of that, there's a bit of dirt and turn 20 leading onto that straightaway up the hill. Uh, same thing. You're going to use everything that's paved and something that isn't right there. As you stare, stare, stare that hill down, you're, you're going to watch him compress as he goes under braking. Watch this. The, the tires lock up as he as he hit the brake. Now Almendinger is one of several drivers with the unique challenge. He has to master the sequential shift five-speed gearbox in the Cup Series and the traditional four-speed in the Xfinity Series uh, that races here later today. Definitely a challenge as as you go through those gearboxes and the thought process. And as you heard Kyle Larson talk about, there's a lot of thinking and thought process that goes into this lap to get it all right because it is such a long lap. Go through nine right there into ten. You want to go as straight as possible over those apex curbs in ten to get a good shot up off the corner. Down into turn eleven. AJ chooses to not split the, the curbs on entry. Missed that corner a little bit. And these are the challenges of just running by yourself. You can't, all those things, Mike, I heard you say, of holding it way out wide, things like that. You do that, you open the door up for a car behind you in race conditions. That is a whole other element of the challenge at Circle of America. Absolutely. Gibbs and Reddick at the top of the board. Group A, second practice. A lot of uh, pickup and lap time, it seems like, from the Group A drivers that were out. Uh, obviously, the faster the Group A drivers that already ran their first 20 minutes and into the second 20 minutes. Ty Gibbs uh, still at the top, but his lap time has gotten quicker. Uh, got into the, looks like, two-minute, nine-second lap barrier. Now, he's the only driver to run a sub-two-minute, ten-second lap. Uh, looks like two minutes, nine seconds, point... Six five six. It's one point two seconds faster than Reddick's fastest time so far. Gibbs is shellacking the field right now by way of pace, and I think he's going to be a uh, favorite for the pole by the way of the pace he's running. I did notice that he was running in the bumps going up the hill to turn one, where not every driver was doing that. Obviously, that's able to arc his corner off. It's just a matter of trying to get through there without having any sort of a brake lock up. Uh, or the tires locking up due to the bumps themselves, maybe throwing the drivers off uh, a little bit, throwing the car up in the air and allowing for the tires not to grip up as easily when they go to make that very sharp left-handed turn uh, up the steepest hill on that racetrack off of one of the longest straightaways on the racetrack as well. So a lot of uh, degrees of difficulty there in turn one, and we'll see that on the restarts as well when the field is packed together. They did move the restart zone back towards turn 20 uh, a little bit more, 
So it will create a more spaced out restart than what we've seen in the past at Coda. They did the same thing for the Indianapolis road course race last year. And they also kind of had a similar thing for the Chicago street race last year. So there wasn't a potential uh, major pileup going into the first turn, which we really didn't see at any of the races throughout the weekend, both at Chicago street for cup Xfinity, as well as Indy last year on the road course for cup and Xfinity. So they've done the same thing here at Coda. So hopefully uh, we'll have more tamed restarts, which uh, is going to create, you know, Better racing, obviously, in my opinion, on the re or cleaner racing, I should say, on the restarts. Um, not having guys, you know, banging into each other six, seven wide, trying to get into a, you know, acute angled corner into turn one that is already super tight, and there's really only one groove to get through there. It's not putting the driver who's in the outside lane on the restarts as well in harm's way of potentially just getting shoot out of the way. You know, and be running fourth and he come out of the corner running 16th or something like that, like we've seen in the past. So uh, not going to see that more than likely this weekend, which is a good thing. It's unfortunate it took him this many years to make that change, but <laughs> we're here nonetheless. We got here eventually. That's all that matters. Got to think the drivers putting in double duty this weekend have an advantage. Just more track time in general. I mean, you see that, you know, with a lot of drivers. I mean, I, I look at Kyle Larson's success you know, in 2021 due to the fact that he just overall was able to run so many extra races in 2020, even though they weren't necessarily NASCAR Cup. He ran, like, multiple races every single week, and then he comes to Cup, he's dialed in, and he's still doing that on the side as well. And uh, I definitely think that that creates a lot of the success that Kyle Larson has had. He's talented, obviously, but just the more track time, the better. It doesn't matter what vehicle you're in. Lands, the tires lock up. Yeah, and once that tire locks up, once that right one. front tire, which is really strange because you typically don't lock the outside tire into a corner. Um, but this, there's there's three bumps right there that you go in and locks that, that, right, one. that locks that right front tire up, and, and that will that flat spot will be able to find itself over and over again. Looks like they're cutting a break again here, real quick. Still 1.2 second advantage for Gibbs over Reddick uh, in lap time, fastest lap time. It's an incredible amount. Whatever Gibbs is doing, he's doing good. His teammate, obviously, Reddick, or affiliated teammate, is right there with him. That character within these racetracks, though, is what create opportunities, passing opportunities, one man's struggles, another man's opportunity. Okay, well, they, you almost, I think that car bottomed out right there. Ooh. Oh, it's going to bottom out. That's exactly him going over those bumps that we're speaking of. He looks like he needs a seat cushion. But this part of the racetrack, these S's, is so much speed gained and lost in these. You see, trying to straighten these curves out as much as possible, but do not overstep the boundaries. You can go out of bounds here and get called for it. You put all four below those in the green, below the, the rumble strips, that's a foul. You're going to the back. You're going to wish you did. But only in the essence is that enforced uh, by NASCAR here. Well, it's a tough spot to get loose right there in 10. Tyler Reddick, third on the board. The fifth of his seven laps, fastest so far. As Michael Jordan looks on, looks at the monitors and the video. Tyler Reddick's had a lot of success at this racetrack. We saw him loop around in the first practice session trying to figure out that maximum speed of how fast you can roll the car. Won a couple races here. Won last year here in this car. You think it has anything to do with that man standing there? You think after Reddick's won it here a couple times, if you're looking at your schedule for the year, I'm probably going to go to Austin. Maybe. I can see I'm going to do He's had a lot of races, though, and, and that's you can tell he has a passion for this sport and with all the all the time and effort and money that they've spent. You see There's a, 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 a couple cars behind Tyler right there. Another thing I bet is Mike be stewing in the back of his mind is maybe a golf game this afternoon somewhere. The weather's pretty nice. <laughs> It'd be a lot more fun if he ended it with a win, though, Sunday. Holla. <laughs> Ty Gibbs has been fastest throughout uh, this double practice session. 
and he ran a mock qualifying run his last time out, ran one lap, 209.65. 94.6 miles per hour, and that leads all drivers, Larry. Yeah, they put a fresh set of tires on him. He went out there and made a mock run, and then Chris Gale, his crew chief, brought him in and wanted him to look at the, all of the data, the SMT data, the, the throttle, the brake, the shifting, all those things, and kind of evaluate what that looked like on that one mock qualifying. But that lap he ran, that was one second faster than William Byron set on the pole one year ago. Wow. I am so impressed with Ty Gibbs to be able to come here against this competition and to be where he is. I mean, you're talking experienced teammates that he's outrunning. You're talking world-class race car drivers, SDG, uh, V8 Supercars, three-time champion, all the way across the board, A.J. Allmendinger, the ringer that he is. For this kid to be on top of this board right now is very impressive. Well, it's not, it's not a huge surprise because he's been so successful on the, on the road courses. He puts a lot of time and a lot of effort, had a lot of, a lot of laps, a lot of experience, and just he's just good at it. Just under seven minutes to go in final practice for Group A here at Circuit of the Americas. All right. Well, Ty Gibbs still at the top. Shane Van Gisbergen up to second on the leaderboard. Tyler Reddick third. Ross Chastain fourth. And Ryan Bellaney rounds out the top five. Obviously, Gibbs can't put together too many consecutive laps, sub 2 minute 10 seconds, but he is uh, still the fastest on the racetrack of the most recent laps ran. That last lap he just ran was still a tenth quicker than Shane Van Gisbergen's most recent lap, and Gibbs has ran one more lap than Gisbergen. So hey, I would uh, I would definitely start to shoe in. Uh, Ty Gibbs is the favorite to win tomorrow's race right here right now. So if you're asking me who I think is going to win tomorrow, I think it's going to be Ty Gibbs. I was feeling it coming into the weekend, and he's uh, he's showing out already on Saturday. I would have to imagine that that will translate pretty well to Sunday. Um, he's definitely going to be in contention. Just has to make sure, obviously, he doesn't have any corner cutting penalties. Keeps control of the race car throughout the course of the run. Doesn't get taken out and restarted. I think he'll be a okay. Got to have good pit strategy, obviously, to go with it. You still got to put a full race together is what I'm saying, but uh, the speed is definitely there. We'll take a look at the point standings uh, coming into this week. I kind of highlighted it just a little bit at the top, but Kyle Larson leads the point standings right now, tied for the lead with Mark Trix Jr. through five races. Uh, one win for Larson, which is why he has the tiebreaker over Trix. And again, 15 points are awarded. Uh, playoff points, I should say, are awarded to the regular season champion. As far as stage wins this season, Larson also has two. Gibbs picked up both of his last weekend to get to two. And nobody else has two stage wins this year. Quite a few have one. Uh, so they're leading in that category. The lap sled category, Denny Hamlin with 272 laps has actually led the most laps this season. Uh, through these first five races, Larson's led 224 laps. Most of those coming at Las Vegas where he led almost 200 laps that day. 194 laps for Ty Gibbs led. Most of that was last weekend at Bristol and route to those two stages that he was able to win. And Hamlin obviously led a lot of laps uh, at Bristol as well. Led some laps uh, at Phoenix as well as Gibbs the week before. That's really what's putting them much more ahead of everybody else. Want to know what's weird? Ty Gillen is fourth in laps led this season. <laughs> 29th in points, but uh, led a lot of laps on the super speedways at Daytona and Atlanta at the beginning of the season. That's still holding true to this point. That's insane. Now, this many races in that he's led as many laps as he has. I guess he's not four. Hang on. We got uh, Hamlin, Larson. It looks like Gibbs, obviously. Uh, Truex has over 100 laps like Christopher Bell. So, still sixth. Sixth in laps led for Todd Gillen, 29th in points this season. Hopefully, he can have some good, strong runs going for himself. If we highlight the cutoff line, I know obviously we still have 21 more races to go in the regular season, uh, but Kyle Busch right on the bubble for right now. I think he'll be all right. Uh, the short track pace hasn't been there, but we know he's been good on road courses uh, with the next-gen car and with RCR. He looks fast this weekend. He's kind of pacing top 10 speed. Uh, Coda's been one of his better racetracks the last several years as well. So I think the speed's going to be there this weekend. He'll have good pace on the intermediates. I don't think you have to worry about him, but kind of some notable drivers who I th who think you have to start worrying about. Joey Logano is 26th in points as of right now. Uh, to Kyle Busch on the cutoff line, he's almost a full race behind already. Um, he is 58 points behind him. 58 points back. Again, you can only score 60 in a full race. 
and that's winning both stages, winning the race. So he is about a full race worth of points out of the cutoff line. Still, again, 21 races to go, but that 22 team has not showed much speed at all this season. Uh, had a little bit of track position strategy that got him uh, a third place finish in one of the stages at Bristol, but the overall speed itself wasn't there. His tires were falling off pretty quick, as it was for most of the Penske Fords. But it's not like it's just him. I mean, Ryan Blaney has had some good runs this year, so you know the equipment is good. Blaney was leading in points going into Bristol, and Logano is outside the top 25. A lot of other Fords are out running Logano. Uh, you know, his other teammate, Austin Sindrick's 21st in points. A couple of the SHR Fords have had better seasons. I know Gregson had the points penalty, so uh, he is not ahead of Logano in the standings necessarily, but he's had more speed than Joey. Uh, Michael McDowell, obviously, right around the cutoff line right now, as mentioned, Chase Briscoe. Uh, both the RFK Fords are in the top 16 points once again at Keselowski and Busher. So Logano definitely has to get it going here and uh, get it going fast. And once he turns one good finish, one good finish turns into two good finishes, two turns into three, and so on and so forth. So uh, you just got to get the the monkey off his back at this point, get a good race together. We'll see if this weekend's going to be it, but uh, it doesn't look like he's pacing very well right now. He's 20th on our practice leaderboard. If he doesn't qualify well on a road course where track position matters more than any other racetrack, look out. I, I, I don't think uh, good things are... Going to be coming for Logano's way again this weekend, which would be a shame because uh, that's just how terrible of a season he has had so far. I mean, he's had a couple of DNFs, obviously, as well to go along with it. Does he have two DNFs? Look at that again. Yeah, two DNFs this season. Uh, very few drivers actually have two or more DNFs. Brad Keselowski also has two DNFs, but he's you know halfway up the leaderboard compared to where Keselowski's at, 13th for Brad gained nine positions based off of Bristol having a top five, scoring a lot of stage points. Third place finish last week for Brad K. But yeah, Joey Logano is uh, definitely struggling. Only one top ten finish for Logano through the first five races as well. 79 laps led, though. Most of those were at Daytona and Atlanta in those first two races. Kind of similar to Todd Gillen, who frankly is only two positions ahead of uh, in points, three positions, rather, ahead of in the point standings. As far as, like, underdogs go, too, uh, kind of highlighting their seasons, the drivers that, maybe not necessarily underdogs, but drivers that missed the playoffs last year that are pacing to get into the playoffs this year. Uh, Daniel Suarez, obviously, is already locked in with his win at Atlanta. So uh, you can pencil in Daniel Suarez to make in the playoffs this year. But even in the overall standings, he's 11th right now. So it's a big step up from missing a season ago, finishing right around 20th in points. Alex Bowman obviously out with an injury uh, last year, was lacking consistency even early this season, but two top five finishes, obviously a good run last week at Bristol, getting a fourth place finish out of it, and then also in the Daytona 500, excuse me, finishing in second. He looks like he's got pretty decent speed this weekend as well. Uh, was in the top 10 for Group B's practice session. Uh, Group A just concluding their second session right now so you see a lot of group a drivers at the top of the charts uh the group b drivers will mix in a little bit more once they go out on the track for the second time top five are all group a drivers but again they've had an additional 20 minutes already that group b has yet to have uh back to the point standings though john hunter nemechek is a big name that's in the top 16 in points as well a couple top 10 finishes early in the season including last week at bristol got a lot of stage points last week as well uh, Toyotas have been pretty fast out of the gate this year, so uh, Legacy Motor Club, I think a lot of people probably had as a potential underdog as Eric Jones to maybe make the playoffs out of that camp switching to Toyota, but John Arnemichek putting up the better statistical uh, stats, at least through the first five races this year. Hasn't led any laps necessarily, but again, he's getting good, consistent finishes in uh, you know, the third-tier Toyota program and sets himself up 15th in the point standings. I mean, like I mentioned, he's ahead of guys like Logano, Kyle Busch, now, even Bubba Wallace, who was in the playoffs last year, is 18th in points. Uh, Jace Briscoe, former playoff driver, is 19th. So, uh, doing good for right now. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who was in the playoffs last year, went in the Daytona 500. Still had a fairly consistent season. Kind of hovered right around that 16th place in points in the driver's stage throughout last year anyway. So, even without that win, he would have been pacing to potentially get in. He's 23rd in the standings right now, just the one top 10 run. Uh, very few drivers have not yet collected a top 10 so far this season. Uh, Carson Hosevar, 24th in points, would be the highest in the point standings without a top 10. Daniel Hemrick, Josh Berry, uh, Justin Haley, 
Todd Gillen and Austin Dillon all still searching for the first top tens this year, as well as uh, Harrison Burton, Kaz Grala, Ryan Priest. So work to be done there. Zane Smith, obviously, as well. Most top tens this season by way of consistency, Ty Gibbs, four of them. He's the only driver with four top tens this season. Everybody else has three or less, and very few drivers even have three. I mean, you look at Larson, who's the points leader. He's only got two top ten finishes. Uh, both of them were top five runs last week at Bristol, finishing fifth, and obviously his win at Las Vegas, which was a max points day that day, which has uh, still led him to the top of the leaderboard early in the season, which you're going to see the standings pretty tight from top to bottom this early. Once we get about eight or nine races in, uh, you'll really start to kind of see who – uh, is going to be an actual playoff contender and who isn't. I'd say about a race after Talladega would be kind of that fine point. It gets about the Coke 600 and you start to get into maybe some panic mode if Logano's still well outside the top 20 in points. Logano's not been fast on road courses, though. No, he is not. I mean, and he doesn't look great this weekend either, so things not going well for him early. Yeah, Briscoe was out last year, but he was in the year before that. Got the win at Phoenix. May be able to break back into victory lane again this season. Have to wait and see. Dave Martz talked about B-Rad being the best. Yeah, Keselowski's definitely had some speed. Uh, picked up a little bit more, I'd say, last week with the tire management race at Bristol, but... Two top fives on the season for Keselowski, and that was after DNFing the first two races of the season. You got to figure these last three races for Brad, he's dug from about 30th in points to 13th. So it's how quickly he can still move forward this early in the season. In a neat area, I mean, if you're looking for a new racetrack that you haven't visited before, try this one out. I'm serious. This is a cool racetrack, as Kevin said. Obviously, so many different areas to watch a race, whether it's up there, turn one. Um, I love the different aspects of this racetrack, and, and Austin is a pretty, pretty cool city to get here. It's definitely a weird place. I love it. They, they embrace weird. Oh, yeah, let's get weird. That's like the unofficial motto of, of the city. That's where I was going. I, hey, I, I've been weird here before. <laughs> it's not just here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We see Chase Elliott needing some help here. The old nine ball hasn't been very good in that first session. You know they went back and made some adjustments. In the Gen 6 car, he thoroughly dominated on road courses. Seven wins and 19 starts. But since the change to the seventh generation NASCAR Cup car, not and, so much. It, and it's different. I, I drove both. Uh, the biggest difference with this car is the is the braking, the wheel hop, and, and that technique that you needed as a as a NASCAR driver uh, that you had so much experience with, and not not having the wheel hop is just not there in these cars. These cars don't wheel hop. Uh, you can slide the rear brake, so the braking can be much more aggressive, which is why a lot of these guys can come in and drive this car because we don't have to worry about that that wheel hop anymore. And that's what he was so good at wheel hop. He could hold the braking. He, he could outbreak people, not only for the first lap, but the end lap. He could get more out of his braking than anybody in that old straight axles uh, type of racing. Was he dominant at it. Different challenge, but he's still solid. That average finish went from 7th to ninth or whatever. I think I saw that last one. That's the one that shows me the speed is still there. Just need to be able to lead some more laps to get into victory lane. And I think the other thing is that the car is just totally different to, as to what you want in the car, what's underneath the car. It's, it's developing a new package to, to try to try to make your car go fast. What you like and what you don't like is just different from uh, what, what we used to have to this next-gen car. And especially on a road course, this seventh-generation car now has an 18-inch diameter wheel and a very low-profile tire compared to the 15-inch wheel and those big basketballs that Goodyear used to put on it. And, and you'd have you have those issues to deal with that you don't have here in a much more modern 
uh, wheel tire combination. Well, you can definitely see that he's struggling a lot more than his teammate William Byron behind him. I mean, it started the top of the hill in turn one. He missed the corner a little bit, and he it didn't end there. It seemed the like he section. missed in the whole section there. I think that car may be tight or way too loose to stay uh, keep the grip underneath of it. William Byron looking at his inside quite a bit better. All four of the Hendrick cars are in Group B and are together on the track uh, reasonably close. Well, now, right now. You, you see that, that Chase let William Byron go by, and this is a good learning opportunity, knowing that you can, you can know what's in that car in front of you. you got Michael McDowell around after turn nine. We've seen several cars spin out right there. You get off into that ledge. There's dirt on the racetrack. There's, you know, crossing that curve on the entry to the corner, the exit to the corner. Um... Well, if there's anybody here that is going to find and test the limits, it's going to be Michael McDowell. Started right there, got wide, car bounced and shot him wide. Now he's not set up as good for here. Now you're cutting the corner off even harder. There's the dirt. See the dirt on the racetrack? The dirt lives in the curb, so you have to be below the curb. If you, if you get the outside, if you miss this entry right here and get those left side tires and the dirt in the curb, It'll spin you around every time. You have to be below that curb or you're in the dirt that's built up in the in the ridges, in the valleys inside the curb. Never had a chance. You have to give up a little bit on the entry into, into turn nine to be able to put the car in the right spot. It's so important here, Coda, to have the car positioned correctly. 15 minutes to go in group B, final practice. All right. Uh, again, uh, this is the final practice session of the day, uh, of the weekend, really, for any of the three series. Practice qualifying has already gone on for Truck Xfinity and now Cup Series. Uh, just about to wrap up practice. Another 15 minutes still to go for the final 20-minute session for group B. Both of the sessions for 20 laps for Group A have already gone out, so once we see Group B pull in for the end of their practice, we'll roll right into Group A qualifying. 15 minutes to try to set the fastest lap time you can. Uh, again, all cars can go on the racetrack at the same time, uh, kind of spread apart here, and the top five from each group will advance into the second and final session of qualifying to set the fastest 10 in order. Uh, that's very similar to obviously how we do things on other racetracks with the group qualifying, but the only difference here at the road course is it's a time session and every car from the group is out on the racetrack at the same time. We don't see that on the ovals. I remember when we used to see that on the ovals and it was a shit show at some tracks, so they went away with it and now we only do it on road courses. Good move there by NASCAR. Uh, cause, uh, does anybody remember that Fontana uh, qualifying? I think it was Fontana. I think it was a auto club qualifying session horsepower package for the cup cars and uh nobody ended up going out on the track until like the last minute and the only guy that got to the start finish line to start his time lap before that time uh was basically cut off because you have to start the lap before the clock hits zero if you don't start the lap then that lap doesn't count and if you do start the lap, then obviously you can finish the lap after the clock hits zero. The only driver who hit the start finish line before the lap uh, started was Austin Dillon. And uh, as a result of that, Austin Dillon was the pole sitter. And he was the only driver in that final group that actually made it. So, yeah, that was uh, that was something, to say the least. I think they kept it for short tracks still the rest of that season. And then after the end of the year, they just did away with it entirely. Because there was a different package, obviously, with the uh, 750 horsepower on the and low downforce with the Gen 6 car in the later years of the short tracks and road courses, but yeah, the, the 550 package at the ovals, that, that was pretty bad. That was, uh, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen before and hope to not see since. Chase needs to be confident. Chase's leg to H. You know, I don't know what the end of that means, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, Chase Elliott, like you mentioned there, or like uh, Clint Boyer mentioned, the speed is there because the average finish hasn't really dipped off. The laps led is still, I think, for the most part there. Yeah, overall in 19 races, he's led twice as many laps as he has with the uh, Gen 7 or the next gen car road courses, but he's also ran eight less races. So, you know, and the races ran honestly the. The lap's lead is about the same. It's just trying to position himself in the right way 
to be the winner at the end of the race. He's still getting top fives and top tens consistently on road courses, but he's just not necessarily competing for wins as much. And we saw a glimpse of that one of the last road course races last year where it kind of looked like old Chase Elliott on road courses from the Gen 6 years, and that was at Indianapolis where he was basically 1-2 and two with Michael McDowell the whole day. He was closing in on him late. McDowell was able to get the win. Uh, again, that was last season at Indy on the road course. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if Elliott does go back to victory lane on a road course again this season, but until we see it, I can't necessarily say that he is going to uh, win a race on a road course. It would be hard for me to actually predict him as my winner for that weekend. On this great NASCAR race, we'll also visit Texas Motor Speedway. Every road course has a calamity corner. This is turn eight, and look at the line that drivers like Austin Sindrick are taking uh, to try to get through here efficiently. Yeah, and you see Christopher Bell miss that entry. You have to get the car to the right, get it the right front tire set in that trough on that line in the dirt and just let it pull you around there. If you miss the entry, or you're carrying too much speed and you get off the right front, off that line, this is this is wrong. Don't do that. That's, that's the wrong way to approach that. 48 is perfect. See that? Just pulls it right around the corner. And when you say misses, I'm talking, I heard you say that. He missed by one inch when it made you say that he missed. One yeah. inch on the offside of your race car. That's how good these race car drivers are. And that's the difference between being fast and being up on the track. Yeah, some cars go through there better than others when they hit that access road with the right front. But it's a turn nine, in my opinion, is a give up corner. Just put the car in the right spot because the consequences are way bigger if you miss. I would go ahead and just let him dig that corner out and quit filling it back in with dirt. You want to go down there and hit that thing? No problem, but it's probably going to tear your front of the car off. All right, turn eight, calamity corner. Let's check with Josh. Well, Mike, Bubba Wallace, one of those drivers that's been constantly working. How does he feel out there? How comfortable? I don't know if I'm calling it comfortable. I don't know if I'm calling it. I feel good. Uh, my hands are really busy, and I kind of do that everywhere we go to, like to start the morning off. I'm They call it nervous wheel, and then it usually slows down throughout the weekend, so I just need to do that faster. Uh, but proud of the effort. Our Mobile One Toyota Camry is really good, I think. You know, it's just so hard to know. Like, if we were at Kansas, I'm going to be like, yeah, we're really good. I feel comfortable. Um, but I uh, feel good with the speed. Really proud of the work that we put in. Proud of myself for just committing to it. It's been about five hours almost uh, just every week, just trying to, not every week, five hours, but total time uh, of prepping here for Coda, and it's paying off. So appreciate everybody back at Airspeed, everybody 2311, just grinding, trying to get our road course program better. Really leaning on Tyler to, to figure out where we need to be. Um, so, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's practice, so it doesn't pay any bills. So, neither does qualifying. Got to make it last and run all the laps tomorrow. That's the main goal. Pretty cool to have the boss right over your shoulder, too, here during practice, right? Yeah, no, nah, no surprise. Hell, I hadn't seen him in forever. Thought he'd quit the team. I thought Danny was majority owner. So, nice to see him here. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talking about Michael Jordan there. Uh, Airspeed is the name for their new complex just built in Huntersville, North Carolina, uh, right alongside I-77. Uh, you can easily spot that building because the windows facing the highway uh, the edges of the, with the vertical panes of the windows are slanted exactly 23 degrees. Well, they put a lot of time and effort and thought. And those things matter in today's world in, in attracting employees and trying to get people to, people want to work somewhere new, somewhere nice, somewhere cool. It's a cool looking building. It just took the words right out of my mouth. Really cool. It even has like cool red down lights on it. You look over, you're driving down the interstate, look over, what is that? Oh yeah. That's can't, 23 11. You can't be associated with Michael Jordan and not be cool. Fact. Uh, last week when Denny won, even though he's you know, he's part owner of that team, even though he doesn't drive for that team, they put blue down lights on the building. They could change them just like the dash lights on your car. Pick a color. We but said cool. I mean, color. if you're going to be cool, you got to be able to adjust your lights. Did right? you know you had dash lights on your car? Yes. Okay. Empire State okay. Building, they lighted up different colors. You know, they've been doing that for a long time. But. <laughs> Six Chevys, four Toyotas in the top ten. The highest Ford on the board is Austin Sindrick in 11th, followed by Ooh. Chase Briscoe in 12th. 
I think there's a problem right now. Well, obviously, there's a problem with the Fords on a weekly basis. I will say, I mean, Ryan Blaney's been the spotlight of it, other than obviously last week, uh, the tires just were not hanging on well on the long runs for any of the Penske cars, for that matter. But the uh, laps also, the weeks before that, he had three straight top five finishes. Everybody else in the Ford camp, though, consistently running outside the top five. The RFK Fords, kind of like last year, back half of the top ten on a weekly basis. And we may see them contend for a win here and there throughout the course of the season. That looks to be the case again uh, for this year. The RFK Fords were pretty bad on road courses last season, I will say. I kind of spotlighted that in most of the pre-races that we did prior to a road course Cup Series race. But... That may be the same again here this weekend, seeing them outside the top 15 as well uh, for both Keselowski and Busher in speed. Uh, we'll see how they qualify because qualifying is going to be a little bit better, uh, dictating maybe how you're going to run in the race than practice by way of road course just because track position matters that much. Uh, it's very difficult to make passes on a road course compared to most ovals in the NASCAR Cup Series. The lap time also between first and second on the leaderboard dropped exponentially uh, with Bubble Walls putting up uh, the second fastest lap time on the charts of a one uh, two minute ten second point two three five uh, lap it was about a half a second behind Ty Gibbs, but for a while there Gibbs was about a full second faster than everybody else. A lot of the drivers in the second group though that have made their way into the top five have cut that deficit down a bit, but still over a half a second difference between. P1 and P2. And we'll see that gap close more and more throughout the course of the weekend uh, with every growing pit stop through the race tomorrow as well. Drivers get to make more adjustments to the car, get them more to their liking, more laps on the racetrack as well. Uh, is only going to have better execution uh, on a lap-by-lap, -lap, corner by corner basis. All right, we're up to 43 likes on the stream. We're just seven away from our goal of 50. Again, a very early stream here this morning. Went live at 10 a.m. for Cup Series practice. Only a few minutes left of practice here, and then we will get into qualifying right after on this stream. Rod Brown, thanks for uh, tuning in. T-Van, thanks for streaming as well. Who is fastest in truck practice? Uh, I had it earlier. Give me one second to check. I'll check on screen. I don't know why I was about to check on my phone. I'll let you guys see it too. I can't remember his name. It was Connor something. He's in the seven truck this week, and I think he's making his first truck start. I'll have to look more up on him before the actual start of the uh, truck race later because I don't know much about him. I don't know if he's a road course ringer or if he's just somebody young that's running – the race today because of an age limit that you can only run road courses and short tracks under the age of 18 and truck and Xfinity, but I'll find out more about him in detail before that race starts on that stream a little bit later this afternoon. I just log out of the leaderboard. No, I did not. Okay. Wanted to make sure I still had that up. Uh, actually, it looks like Corey Heim was fastest in practice. My bad on that. Uh, Connor Zilich is on the pole, though. Uh, Zilich was second fastest in practice. Corey Heim was fastest overall in practice, though, for trucks. And that took place yesterday, actually. That was not today. That was yesterday. A couple of, uh, cup guys in the truck and Xfinity Series field this weekend. Ross Chastain will be running that truck race in a little bit. Third fastest in practice. Look at the qualifying order there. Zilich at the top in the seven truck for Spire. Same truck that Kyle Busch has ran the last several weeks. Corey Heim right there, P2. If I pick to win the race, is going to be Corey Heim. I'm still going with the experience there, but I think Zilich, he's got the equipment and obviously has the speed this weekend. We'll see if he can put together a clean racing Get his first win and his first start in the truck series. We saw Ty Gibbs do it in an Xfinity race on the Daytona Road Course a couple years ago. So it's been done before. We'll see if he can do it again. And obviously, SVG had uh, Chicago Street Race in the Cup Series last year, most notably as well. Fastest of the Group B drivers is Ross Chastain. 
Uh, well, never mind. Now it's Alex Bowman. Bowman just jumped a second right as I said that. So second fastest overall for Bowman, but fastest of the Group B drivers. Nobody has been able to run a two-minute, nine-second lap time other than Ty Gibbs. 209.66. Bowman a 210.02. .02. Very close to that 210 flat for Alex Bowman. Again, this is one of his better road courses, if not his very best road course uh, for Alex Bowman at least. And looking like he's got speed. I mean, just the drivers who have ran well here with the next-gen car are the drivers that are at the top of the leaderboard in practice, like Bowman, Chastain, who's won here before. Shane Van Gisbergen obviously hasn't ran a cup race here before, but we know how good of a road course racer he is. He's eighth overall in practice. And I think he was second fastest of the Group A drivers. Uh, fourth fastest of Group A drivers. Walsh was second fastest. Kyle Busch was third. Shane Van Gisbergen's only ran two career cup races. He's finished top ten in both of them. It's got to be a strong uh, candidate to get another top 10 tomorrow, I would like to believe. I'm going to keep picking him to finish top 10 on a road course until he doesn't <laughs> at this rate. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Some of the drivers at the very bottom of this leaderboard, I mean, I mentioned Joey Logano struggles this season, struggling here this weekend. Ford just looks off. There are no Fords in the top 10 in practice from Group A or Group B. Uh, Logano looks like he's towards the bottom of the chart of the Fords. Keselowski as well. Keselowski notably hasn't been good on road courses in the last half decade or so. Um, and really, his whole career on road courses other than at Watkins Glen have been pretty bad. And even the last several years at Watkins Glen's not been good. So kind of you know, spotlighting already now that he's going to be one of my don't haves tomorrow, but not surprised to see him down here. Denny Hamlin has not been good with the next gen car on road courses. He was a lot better with the gen six, but uh, next gen, he has been struggling to get top 10 runs. Hamlin is 33rd overall in practice. It's not the speed in the Toyotas either because the Toyotas are towards the top. You got Gibbs obviously leading the way. Wallace is third. Um, Kamui Kobayashi's top 10. Christopher Bell's top 10. Reddick just outside the top 10 and 12. So the speed is there for the Toyotas, but yeah, Denny Hamlin uh, falling behind quite a bit here in practice. 39 cars again this weekend, three non chartered entries. Practice is now just concluded. And we'll get into qualifying here in a couple minutes. Group A will have 15 minutes. The top five from that group will move on into the final session to qualify for the top 10. And that final session will be five minutes. 19 cars in Group A. Group B will have 18. Karen Williams, thanks for tuning in as well. JoJo, welcome to the stream. Take a quick ad break. Continue our live commentary coverage of the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix practice. And now going into qualifying. Again, practice just concluded qualifying on the same stream coming up shortly. Last lap of practice, uh, remember the caution came out for time stopping, but you could still finish your lap. Byron just finished his lap and now puts himself P1. So on the very last lap of practice, William Byron will be fastest, and he was the only other driver other than Ty Gibbs to post a lap under 2 minutes and 10 seconds. About three hundredths of a second quicker was Byron over Gibbs. So Gibbs may have a little competition here for the pole. Bowman, like I mentioned, picked up quite a bit as well. Uh, his last two laps, Bowman's last two, were his fastest two. He must have put fresh tires on for that. Um, three tenths of a second off of Gibbs, nearly four tenths, but third overall there for Bowman. So a couple of Chevys mixing in with the Toyotas late. Bell picked up on his last lap of practice as well. Got into the top five. Went from about ninth overall to fifth. So William Byron, fastest in cup practice overall here today. And everybody pretty much ran anywhere between 13 to 18 laps for the most part in practice. Some of them over 20, but for the most part, not the case. It's going to be very interesting 
to see how this uh, practice session will unfold. Uh, qualifying session, I should say, will unfold. I think a lot of the guys, obviously, who work fast at practice are going to be fast here. I think with road courses, that translates over a lot more consistently than what you would see from practice on an oval. Because usually a lot of the time, practice on ovals is usually race trim, and then qualifying trim is completely different. But on a road course, I feel like for the most part, you're just trying to run time trial laps as best as you can. Uh, there's a little bit of tire conservation in there. I'd say not as much with the next-gen car, but there is some. Again, Fox Sports 1 is where you can watch the actual coverage of practice of qualifying for the Cup Series. Started on FS2 for the first half hour, and then at 10.30 Eastern time, they moved to FS1, and that's where they've been for about the last hour or so. Why don't I have NASCAR Mobile? I have the NASCAR like mobile app. I don't know exactly what you're talking about with NASCAR mobile. I mean, I get you get like live time and scoring updates. That's pretty much what this raw feed is. That updates every lap. It's not going to make the sink into the stream any quicker. I don't want to miss anything, so I try to just... Watch the race coverage when I do these commentary streams and go from there. Listen to the scanner. The scanner is going to be a little bit ahead of TV, though, too. That's another reason why I don't do it. Because they're synced in. Those are more for uh, like people that are actually at the racetrack. It would work out better because you can actually listen to it as it's happening. You're, you know, right there. But even like cable TV has a slight delay. I can remember like hearing something on like Ryan Blaney's radio frequency before I had the YouTube channel when I would listen to it and I would like listen to his radio and there'd be like a wreck. And then like 10 seconds later, I would actually see it. So it kind of spoiled things. So then I ended up like not using it anymore and only use it when I do go to the racetrack. Reddick lacking the pace he had last year. Yeah, definitely. For right now, um, I'm sure he can pick some of those spots up. He qualifies well. That'll help with it, too. He's in his first group. We'll see how he does. Just got to get to the top five to set yourself in the top ten and requalify to try to go for the pole from there. A.J. Allmendinger, Zane Smith, Shane Van Gisbergen, Todd Gillen, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Carson Hosevar, Corey LaJoy, Ryan Priest, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Busch, Bubba Wallace, Eric Jones, Chase Briscoe, Chris Buescher, John Hunter Nemechek, Ryan Blaney, Brad Keselowski, Ty Gibbs, and Denny Hamlin are all in Group A. And again, they will be the first to hit the track for a time 15-minute qualifying session. Uh, fastest lap out of the 15 minutes is going to be your qualifying lap to try to advance into the second session to try to rerun for the pole. Again, these teams had three sets of tires through both of the 20-minute group practice sessions as well as uh, qualifying. One like away from our goal of 50 and qualifying just about to begin here. Appreciate that, everybody. Uh, let's try to get that up even higher. Maybe we can get the 75 here before the end of the stream. Again, very early stream. Definitely the early start time to a stream we've had this season. I think there's going to be some uh, practice sessions later this year that are going to start like 8.30, 9 o'clock local time. So we'll have even earlier start times than this. And this is actually uh, about 9 o'clock local time, uh, considering it's central time zone in Coda compared to what we had here. Uh, here's a quick interview with William Byron. In a short amount of time, you're just trying to... You're know, trying to understand what your balance is, but also understand you know where you're losing time. So um, I feel like our Raptor Chevy has steadily kind of improved as we've gotten through practice. I feel like we uh, we unloaded a little bit too free, and then and then um, made some adjustments, got a little bit better, but also one adjustment that I felt like was was a little too far, and it kind of got ourselves back into a, a realm that I feel feel decent about. So our Raptor Chevy is, is solid here. Everyone's going to pick up in qualifying, so there's still time to be had, and 
Um, the dirt in uh, turn eight is, is really tricky, just the way that you have to hit that. Um, it almost feels like you're going to lose time regardless through there. So um, just got to work on improving a couple uh, corners here and there. Turn one is a little bit trickier than last year. There's a bump there that uh, I feel like is forcing everyone to lock up. So, um, you know, I feel like just trying to piece the whole lap together. But um, so far, so good. But everyone's everyone's really close. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Good luck with all mine. Byron won the pole here for last year's race. All right, again, top five advance. 15 minutes on the clock, down to about 13 and a half now. And you don't actually start your time lap through practice and qualifying at the start-finish line. Uh, there is a timing interval right about the entrance of turn 19. Uh, just before getting into the braking zone of turn 19 is where the actual timed lap will be started. And again, that is only for practice and qualifying. That's due to the length of the actual road course, so they can start a lap a little sooner. And they don't have to take an unwinding lap, I guess, uh, with the timed session. After they hit the start-finish line, they can just come straight to pit road as soon as they get through turn 19 on this 20-turn road course. So Ty Gibbs, one of the first drivers to try to get out on the racetrack, set a lap time with the clean air. He was fastest in Group A in both the 20-minute sessions. It was second fastest overall to that of William Byron, who on his final lap again set a lap time faster than Gibbs's fastest time. So I would imagine Gibbs definitely going to be a threat for the pole. It should be an easy lock for a top five here. Unless he has some sort of a mistake. Which could happen. You never know. Maybe he misses uh, the S's and that lap won't count. Although it did look like he got through the S's pretty well there. Just getting out of uh, turn nine. Definitely locked the brakes up quite a bit in turn eight. And now into the longest straightaway on the racetrack. And a downhill degrade into another very sharp 90-degree left-handed corner. A lot of sharp 90-degree corners on this racetrack. Definitely built for open wheel racing, I'd say. Not so much for stock car racing. Like four or five turns on this track that are hard 90s. And they're usually the left-handed corners, too. I don't think there's any... Hard 90-degree right-handed corners on the racetrack. There are, but they're not as heavy of a braking zone necessarily as the left-handed turns around this circuit. Yep, central time. An hour behind where I'm at. But yeah, at local time, practice started right at 9 a.m. So we will have some of those streams Eastern time as well here uh, later this season. Once we get into the summer months and we get like all three series at the racetrack at the same time and a track like Charlotte or something of that nature, the East Coast. All right, well, Ty Gibbs already ran a faster lap than what he did in practice, uh, but Tyler Reddick was even faster than him on his first lap. And you can run more than one lap. A lot of these drivers are going to go out now, and then if they're below fifth, they're going to try to better their qualifying position on the last minute or so. Uh, cool the tires down, or cool the engine down, most importantly. Once again. So Tyler Reddick at the top of the charts, 209.13. He was 12th overall in practice, picked up quite a bit already into qualifying. Corey LaJoy, who was pretty fast in Group A of practice, I think he was top five. And uh, now he's top five in qualifying, up to fourth. 14 cars have completed a lap, uh, 15 now. And we'll go through that full list of drivers based off qualifying here in a moment. A.J. Allmendinger right on the bubble, currently fifth. Two minute, 10 second point, 16 second lap time. Four drivers sub two minute, 10 seconds. We only saw two drivers do that in practice, one in each group, Byron and Gibbs. 
Hamlin picked up a ton from practice into qualifying. A couple seconds of time he really found there. Great lap by Hamlin to get to third with a 209.93. Seventeen of the nineteen cars have hit the track so far for qualifying. And you can see our leaderboard right now, about six hundredth of a second difference at the top between Reddick and Gibbs. Three Toyotas, one, two, three, followed by a bunch of Chevys, and again the Fords lacking in speed again this weekend. I'd say even more so on the road course side of things this weekend than what we've seen on any of the ovals this year, which they have been behind the other two manufacturers. They're the only manufacturer yet to go to victory lane this season. First two races, one uh, first three races, excuse me, won by Chevy. Last two dominated by Toyota at Phoenix and Bristol on the shorter tracks. The short track and road course program, I'd say, here for Toyota looks very strong. And they're going to be tough to hang with the rest of the year on those style of racetracks. And having a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back like this is definitely huge to set themselves up in the early going of the season by way of point standings. Major lockup in turn eight for Bubba Wallace. He made a huge mistake on his lap. He's one of only two more drivers that have yet to complete uh, lap time. Shane Van Gisbergen out on the track right now is also the other driver who would still have to complete his qualifying lap. Wallace was top three in practice, but that mistake in turn eight, I don't think he's going to get into the top five. I'd be shocked if he still gets there. Shane Van Gisbergen just getting out of turn uh, 11, it looks like right now. Wallace is going to complete his lap much before SVG. Through the stadium section is Wallace. Still tracking in the green, which I'm quite surprised considering the lockup in turn 8. I thought he pushed a little too hard. Again, just a, really a testament to the speed in the Toyotas this weekend. And Wallace still gets into the top 5 even with the lockup. Get to change that set of tires, I think, before his uh, second session of qualifying if he does advance, but... Right now looking good. Third fastest for Bubba Wallace. Four tenths of a second off of Reddick's lap time, but a four tenths of a second ahead of the bubble as well. Quite a bit of an increment of time there between first and fifth. SVG just outside the top ten. Sixth fastest ran the same lap time to the hundredth of second with Corey LaJoy. Uh, LaJoy, seven one-thousandths of a second quicker than Shane Van Gisberg, and that's the difference for that final spot right now to get into the top five through Group A. So SVG's probably going to cool it down and then run another lap. Potentially, maybe they'll just settle in with where he's at right now. Might see a couple more drivers back out of the track as we have about six more minutes left of Group A qualifying. Your top five, Tyler Reddick. Ty Gibbs, Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, Corey LaJoy, fifth. LaJoy, the fastest Chevy out there. Great lap. You know it's great when you beat SVG. It looks like SVG has stayed on the racetrack, knowing he was seven one-thousandths of a second off of where he needed to be. A.J. Allmendinger still in his car, and they're probably cooling that engine down right now. Still five and a half minutes left. See if Van Gisbergen tries to pick it back up again when he gets closer to the time and scoring the line uh, to start his next lap. John Hunter Nemechek getting out of his car. He will not run another lap. Currently 12th in top five advance. Shane Van Gisbergen is still out there, just kind of slowly pacing. I think he's going to give it one more go. He's got time to do so. Still about four to four and a half minutes. Once you start your lap, you can finish it after the time has expired. SVG just getting into the stadium section now around turn 14. Denny Hamlin in the Interstate Batteries paint scheme this weekend is going to be throwing me for a loop when I see him on track. 
for commentary purposes tomorrow. I can see it already. Sarah India, thanks for tuning in. Fords were definitely the best on the super speedways. And that gap was closed, I do think, from where it was last year. They didn't look as dominant as the last couple years with the next gen on the super speedways, but some of the faster ones in the race, like Blaney, Logano, Gilliland, uh, to name a few. Kislowski's up there. But yeah, on the not super speedways, Fords have been absolutely struggling this year. Intermediates. Intermediates, they were more competent, I'd say, than what they've been on the short tracks. And here on the road courses, even further behind than what they've been the last couple of weeks. All right, SVG going to try to give it a second lap. Doesn't look like anybody else for right now is on the track looking to run another one. I think Almendinger might be out there uh, at some point here. He's still got three more minutes to get his lap in. Three more minutes to start his lap. There are quite a few drivers back on the track again. It looks like Corey LaJoy is back on the track again. Just in case SVG runs a lap time that's better than him. SVG was in the red there on his uh, tracking lap until he got to turn 8. Got through there really well. Got back into the green as he accelerated out of the corner and went right back in the red. You really see when he gets into the harsher braking zones, he's really able to close on entry. Give it up on the exit. He's pacing about a tenth off, but still a little less than a half a lap to go. And that could change on a road course. Maybe you can get close enough to the car in front of him, get a little draft off of the longer straightaways. It's going to be close again for SVG. Really, really good through the stadium section of the racetrack for Van Gisbergen. He was seven one thousandths of a second off on his first lap. We'll see where his second lap is going to rank. Will he get him into the top five? And if he gets there, will he stay there? Pushing. No, still sixth. Lap was not as fast. Uh, about three hundredths of a second slower on his second lap than his first. And it's tougher, too, because you got another lap on your tires. Did all he could, still couldn't get into the top five. So SVG going to be starting outside the top ten. I believe that's going to be the first time he'll have to do that in a cup race. He's finished top ten the first two, but he also started there both races. And both those races, too, are with track house racing. Again, this is his first race with colleague racing. Obviously, Allmendinger's had some good runs, not only here, but on road courses with that 16 car. Actually won in that very car at the Roval last year. In his last full-time season in the Cup Series, running full-time again in Xfinity this season. Uh, Chris Buescher, Carson Hosevar, Kyle Busch back on the track. All those drivers are in the top 10, but trying to get into the top 5. They're 8th through 10th on the leaderboard. Ryan Blaney back out on the track again as well. Got about 35 more seconds to start your lap. And we'll see if Corey LaJoy holds on for fifth. Denny Hamlin barely making it in as well. Only uh, three one thousandths of a second quicker than LaJoy to get to fourth, which in return would have made him just a hundredth of a second faster than SVG's fastest lap. So those three drivers within a hundredth of a second of each other for fourth, fifth, and sixth. But only the top five advance. And doesn't look like Bush or Hosevar or Bush are pacing anywhere close enough to get into the top five. I, I mean, the lap times look like they dip off quite a bit from lap one to lap two. I haven't seen anybody pick up from lap one to lap two yet.
time has expired. Now that happened in the S's. Uh, right there, not sure. Yeah, and I, over track I, I, I just, you know, I'm not a crew chief, and, and I understand he could have get bumped out, but I, I would have sat in the pits and taken my chances with uh, with that comfort zone. With that comfort zone. Yeah, I know, it's easy. I, know it's e the good. I know it's easy to sit up here and do, but having just that extra time on your tires uh, is not going to be better for that car going forward. They, they have a lot of speed in their cars, and I just didn't see anybody out there that could beat them. Well... When Shane missed, you know, he was your, your barometer there. When, when he's third. SVG missed right there by as much as he did. I'm comfortable with my 57. Now, Group A will have a little bit of an, an advantage over Group B because of being able to sit there and cool their tires off a little bit longer. And, but I just don't like the extra laps on Bubba's car. I think he was in a good spot. Well, there's another wheel lock up, and you heard AJ complaining about that. They asked him what's wrong. He said, man, I'm having a lot of trouble keeping my wheels locked up. Point taken. So Tyler Reddick is fastest in Group A, the Fast Five advance. Reddick, Gibbs, Wallace, Hamlin, and LaJoy. Group B coming out next. There you have it again, the uh, five drivers from Group A who will have another run at it for the pole. Ty Reddick, Ty Gibbs, Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, and Corey LaJoy. And the gap between LaJoy and Shane Van Gisbergen for that final spot, again, just seven one-thousandths of a second. Wallace, the only driver in the top five to run more than one lap. And as you heard there from Harvick and Boyer, probably going to hurt him having that extra lap on his tires going into this final session. Think Reddick is going to get the pull? He definitely picked up quite a bit from practice. A new contender for it, for sure. Michael Turner, thanks for tuning in. He says, Happy National Puppy Day. Didn't, didn't know that was today. Didn't know that was a thing. There's a day for everything, though. Isn't there like a national something day, like every day? Not the calendar year. I should just do that for the streams. Just like come in. First thing I say, like before I even greet you guys in for like what you're going to be watching. Say, hey, happy national whatever day it is. Seth Thomas, thanks for tuning in. Blaney does not advance. No Fords in the top five here through Group A, and I think that that would probably be the same for Group B as well. Fords look very off. I would not have any Fords in your fantasy lineup tomorrow. I will say that much. Regine Huddleston, thanks for tuning in as well. So first of three live commentary streams of the day. A very long day of streaming here on the channel. Started things off at 10 a.m. this morning with practice. Now we're into qualifying on the same stream. Our Cup Series race will be tomorrow. Our, co our coverage for that race will begin at 3 p.m. Eastern. So again, the qualifying that you're seeing right now, our coverage tomorrow will begin at 3 p.m. Eastern uh, as far as the rest of the action today goes, you can listen to the live commentary of the Truck Series race, which will begin in about an hour and a half from now, 1.30 Eastern Time, and the Xfinity Series race later this evening at 5 p.m. So 5 p.m. for the Xfinity race Eastern. We'll be right here on the channel with our live commentary stream, and our Truck Series stream will begin at 1.30. Do not have a Ford winning. Yeah, I, I don't even know if I have a Ford sniffing the top five, to be completely honest. By way of speed, that's definitely not going to be the case. Obviously, you know, we'll see how cautions maybe dictate the outcome of the race tomorrow. Maybe can flip the strategy for some, but yeah, it's going to be tough. Xfinity Series stream starts at 5 today. 5 Eastern. 5 p.m. Oxygen day today. <laughs> is that actually... Which one is it? Is it National Puppy Day or is it Oxygen Day? Shouldn't Earth Day be coming around sometime around now? I always felt like that was like the end of March. Oxygen Day makes sense. 
every day is oxygen day. I would hope. Because if it's not, I think uh, think you're in some, uh, you're going to be in some bad ways, to say the least. Yeah, Truex and Hamlin were behind quite a bit out of the Toyotas in practice. Uh, well behind the rest of them. Truex is in this group, though. He was not in Group A. And Denny Hamlin moved up from 33rd overall in practice to 3rd on the charts for qualifying. And he will at least lock himself into a top time, top 10 qualifying time for tomorrow. Austin hasn't always been his jam, so I think he's due. But on the other hand, Christopher Bell, a couple of road course wins in his career, and he isn't going to push me into not picking up just for some jinx. I guess you'll find out my pick on Sunday. Oh, somebody get Bob some cheese to go with that flying, will you? Well, I'm going to tell you who I'm picking, this cat right here. 20 car was extremely fast all the way through his runs. I think he ran four or five in a row, and all of them were well in the green. Chris well, Rebell. It's all going to start right here. you, you got to qualify well. you, you got to put yourself in position to, to be up towards the front. So uh, just got to put all the pieces together and, and make sure that you hit your marks to, to get yourself up in the front of the field like you need to be. Larry Mack? Yeah, Chase Elliott, who will be in this group in that nine car, he made three runs during those two practices. He ran about 14 laps. Remember, we're under the impound procedure, even with the two 20-minute practices. And after that last run and that last practice, he's told Alan Gustafson, I don't think we're going to fix what I'm talking about. I think it's a car thing. So I would say we're probably best going back to where we started the day, and I'll just figure it out from there. Mm. Yeah, one inter interesting thing I saw right there was Kyle Larson up on the jack uh, with, with the NASCAR officials and his team up under the car when he should be rolling out on the racetrack. See a lot of tools, Clint. Just last minute adjustments. All right, as the group beat cars roll out, let's check with Josh. AJ Allmendinger, we heard the frustration over the radio. What were you battling out there that uh, didn't allow you to get through to the bottom of the wall? Me, a lot of it, just uh, frustrated myself, not not doing a good enough job for us trying to connect the racetrack. Um, you know, I thought when we unloaded the leaf filter gutter protection, Chevy was. Uh, it's kind of weird for me to say that, by the way. It's kind of cool. It's, uh, I think, the only second time in my life I've ran a leaf filter car, so really appreciative of Matt and leaf filter for uh, for allowing me to run their colors, but. Long story short, we unloaded pretty good. You know, we put this deal together like three weeks ago, decided to do it. I was really happy the way we unloaded. It's just the tricky part of this racetrack. You're trying to fix one end of the racetrack to help the other, and, and I think as we went there, I didn't focus on the right areas. So, um, more frustrated myself letting us down. Did the same thing in Xfinity yesterday. So, regroup. Um, it's not bad. We're, we're starting 13th or 14th right around there. We can go to the front from there and kind of just reset from the start of practice because I thought we were not too bad there. Appreciate it, AJ. Mike? So with the new procedure this year, since he was seventh in Group A, he'll be in the seventh row uh, in the outside lane when they drop the green tomorrow. <laughs> Well, one of the things that was really on point with what AJ said, Matt himself, and, and we talked about it with Christopher Bell. Now you got to go out and hope you made the right adjustments to your car, to, and you got to hit your marks. Uh, don't overdrive the car. Don't overdrive the car. Let the car do the work. Put the car in the right spot and see where it falls. You know where you can push and where you were needed to be better from practice. Especially with these Toyotas, they know they have speed in their cars, so they need to be, they can be a little less aggressive in trying to maintain, uh, make more speed in their cars than the other guys. Nice line for Bell and turn one into the S's. Very challenging section of this course because they are decreasing radius and you're slower at the end of the S's than you were at the beginning. You see that car sliding a little bit, didn't get him too far off track. 
really important corner right here coming up with with turn eight. You've got to position the car for correct in this corner. Don't get too wide. He's too wide. So now you hope that the rest of the track Suarez around and trouble there for Gregson to trying to avoid him. Well, that's a bummer for Gregson trying to that, that ruined both of their laps. Need to come back in and get regrouped and get back out there. That's the difficulty about group qualifying. Somebody slips up in front of you, not only ruins your lap, ruins yours. Had nothing to do with it. Christopher Bell will be the first group B driver to put time up on the board. Mike McDowell on your left. Mike McDowell headed down the back straightaway, long back straightaway from 11 to 12. Christopher Bell at the end of the infield section here. Really, the only place we've seen Christopher slip up was in was in turn eight. We've seen him slide the car a lot, but a little too high right there to slide. Still a good lap play, 109, 28. So. And Joey Logano's lap is disallowed. He went off track, uh, exceeded the track limits in the essence. Well, and as we spoke, there's just a lot of time to be gained and lost in those S's. you got to be right on the limit of being over the curbs too far. Byron at the top of the sheet, 2911. That's actually the fastest lap so far. Chase Elliott's fixed it. He's up there. Well, that's right back into that Denny Hamlin category. Go back, look at all the information, see where, where we need to have our car. Welcome to the club, Austin Sindrick. He has stepped it up in a big way with a big qualifying lap. And right now is the only Ford in position to break through to round two. Yes, sir. I was looking for that Kobayashi. There he is at ninth. Didn't get the lap that he was looking for. Look for him to go back out. Neither did Alex Bowman. But down at 12th, that was a car that was extremely fast in this group in practice. Chastain looks to be on track here for a good lap. Chastain and Bowman trying to break through. Bowman stayed out. Obviously, he's going to run another lap. This one looks way better. Larson just missing. And Chastain is in. 209 and a half. That bumps Truex. Send her to the bubble. See correction there. Out the Ooh. dirt. That, uh, that little bit of dirt, that's going to be a big pothole by the end of the race tomorrow. Yeah, and it always is. As, as we go through the race, it just keeps digging a bigger and bigger hole. Josh, what was happening with Kyle Larson? Yeah, you guys talked about the delay in him going out for qualifying. I just checked in with the team. They told me they were changing out rotors because they were cracked. So that was the reason for the delay there. All right. We asked you to ignore Joey Logano's time there in night. That lap was disallowed. Sorry, we don't have a way to remove him from our pylon. Well, we saw several mistakes out of Alex Bowman and a big one coming off of turn 12. Well, we saw Torres talk about a big mistake. His first lap spun around. Got the car correct. He's back out here. And this lap will not count for Suarez. He cut the S's. Well, then he needs to come back in again immediately. Get this thing cooled off. Get back out there and regroup. Tough start for Suarez and company. This is a good track for them. Going to have to get this thing corrected and the ship righted pretty fast here. Clear at the bottom of the sheet. Not looking good so far. Timmy Hill running uh, both the truck race and the cup race this weekend. Not the lap that Larson was looking for either. Hill and uh, Ross Chastain are the two drivers doing double duty in the truck series. There are five drivers running this afternoon's Xfinity Series race and the Cup race. Kobayashi 13th right now, 210.8. All these guys are trying to get their cars cooled back down. William Byron, he won't be going back out. 
he laid down a, a really fast lap the first time out. He's the, he's the exact opposite of... I don't see anybody in the Fast Five here in jeopardy, do you? Well, I think... Yes. Okay. Yes, I think a, a guy like Larson can go back out. Truex, his teammates have been really fast. They might be able to go back out. Bowman said he was fast. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's Daniel Suarez on his first lap, spinning up at uh, turn number one. Huge lockup. Uh, then on the second lap, there's Noah Gregson uh, getting in trouble there because of Suarez. Now on the second lap, see all four wheels are in the green. Green is no good. When you're going through the S's, that means you have violated the track limits. So Suarez has not. Uh, he, he did post a time at 2:14.5, but well, with that disallowed. Well, with that lockup too. I mean, the, the tires are never going to turn as good again. And so there was a lot of things that went wrong for Daniel on on that run with the with the huge lockup, cut the cut the course. Now you got to go try to do it again to, to just salvage something that's not 17th in your group. It's way, the car's way faster than that. Most of Dylan 19th uh, trying to get up to speed. Here is the driver who is fifth and on the bubble right now, Austin Sindrick, the only Ford in position to advance. Well, let's talk about seventh. That's exactly what yeah. I was just going to say. <laughs> Justin Haley in that seventh, like, that's a that's a really good lap for him. But the speeds have picked up. Remember, 90s were the bubble in that first group. This one is definitely picked up into those 60s on a bubble. It takes a lot better lap in this group to get the job done. And that's just that progression of whose car did what, uh, your teammates did this and that. And so there's... There's a lot of fast race cars that are really close together in these two groups. And I still think Larson can pick his lap up. Truex maybe be able to get the job done. And then Kobayashi, keep an eye on him, going back out, making another lap. Maybe bouncing one of these guys out of the ball. So this is a get-up-to-speed lap for Austin Dillon, currently 19. And as Larry pointed out, when that clock gets down to about 2 minutes, 15 seconds, you need to be rolling if you're going to make it around the start line before time expires. And the reason they want to cut it so close is they want those tires to lose a little bit of air pressure. They want to get the engine cooled back down. Temperature get, out of the tires. Yeah, the temperature out of the tires so that, and then reset the air. Uh, so there's a lot of, you just want to get the car as cool as possible as Austin Dillon starts his lap. You see our, our ticker there uh, kind of goes crazy as they get the wheel spin and jump over the curbs and then it resets itself as the tires come back on the ground. See Austin kind of go inside of those bumps so that he knows that he's going to get it. without locking up those tires under braking. And it worked. Yeah. Losing got a bit of speed through the S's. And that's where I used to lose a lot of speed was coming out of turn one into turn two, just being able to commit to the throttle and hold it as much throttle off of turn one and crack it and use as little brake as possible and get as full throttle as, as possible off of turn two into the S's. That's a good turn eight. Yeah, it was actually gained about a tenth, tenth and a half back on the competition. Just put the car in the right spot and was able to have that lint pull you around the corner and put the throttle down straight through ten. Well, he rolled into the corner a lot harder into the green, lost a lot of time on the exit. That's something Data, when he goes back and looks at this lap, Data will show him. that corner, paid the price of all. What we talk, three tenths. you got to be good under the brakes, but you can't go too far to miss the apex. Look how that carried all the way down to the rest of that lap. Well, here's your guy, Clint. Yep. Larson's rolling. Sabiashi, Suarez, and Logano. Suarez is the one in panic mode right now. Do not go out and mess this lap up. Just give me a solid lap. So these guys will take their time trying to build as little heat as possible in the, in the tires. Daniel went around Kobayashi. He did not want to be behind him. Thought that his car was going to be better. Kobayashi doesn't have a lot of experience in, in these cars. And uh, 
they have plenty of time to get around to the start line before time expires. How close do you want to be to somebody uh, coming up the hill, the front straightaway? Is there a draft? I want to be as, I want to be where I can visually see somebody that's a fair distance away so that it doesn't affect the front end of my car turning. Uh, if you get too close, it's going to make the car tighter and not turn as well. So uh, the, the draft is, is okay, but I, I think... Yeah, sometimes you having have that rabbit to chase a little bit helps yeah. you, right? Helps yes. you with, with your your uh, vantage points and places to hit your marks. But if you're too close, it'll affect your car. Right. Austin Dillon picked up to 10th on his, uh, on his lap now completed. A lot of different strategies as these guys try to position themselves to start the lap. You see Mark Truex, he wasn't ready to go. And I think Kobayashi wants that rabbit of Suarez in front of him, so he has a little better shot of not overdriving the car and it's something to gauge the speed off of but these guys are like hey we're not going yet kyle larson giving himself some distance to mark truex um well the other thing you need to start doing all right now we got to get our tires cleaned up we've been rolling around here you need to get up to speed get them cleaned up but you have to get back in your rhythm too i don't want to come all the way around there to that last corner just putting around there and then all of a sudden waking yourself up and having to get in a rhythm of this racetrack that we know is such a rhythmic place. All right, Hemrick, Haley, and Burton on the clock. Casrala as well. And Kobayashi. Yeah, we saw him a little bit too wide in, in turn 19, and that's going to affect everything in the 20 and, and up the straightaway. He's heading back the right direction up front, so he got off a 20 pretty good. So did Larson. Touched the green in for a second. Kobe Osh lost quite a bit of time there. Yeah, when you go back to his first run, he was impeded by a car coming off the racetrack and, and got wide, and that time he just underdid it. It's just such a tough balance to know how hard to push, when it's going to lock the tire up, how close to, to cut the corners and uh, be, be on the edge of the curve. we got fast corners, slow corners. It's a, this is a tough racetrack. 13 of the 20 drivers in Group B are on track right now. Two things here. Keep an eye on, obviously, we talked about Suarez. He's in the green right there. But Truex Jr. following along right here. Still in the green. Good luck going. Of the drivers in the past five, just Elliott and Cindric are on the racetrack. I think, well, true, I saw some time there with the car in front of him. He's really close. Back into the green for Truex. Yeah, and I just don't like how close Martin Truex is, is to Kobayashi in front of him because that's going to make his car tighter. That uh, helped him down the straightaway with that draft you were talking about, Mike. But I just... In these infield sections here, being that close to the car in front of you is, is going to hurt the way that the car turns a little bit. Yeah, he's screaming right now. Get him out of the way. What is he doing? Kobe is going to stay out there and try to run another lap. That's why he had moved out of the way, but it should have it should have moved him out of the way. Give that guy the respect to get his lap done. But I'm telling you, look, still in the green, guys. doesn't matter. This could knock Austin Cindric off this bubble. I think he's going to do it, Kevin. Yeah. Great job, Martin Truex. And he does. 209, wow. 61. By one one hundredth of a second, Truex bumps Austin Sindrick. So close. Now, Sindrick is on track. So is Chase Elliott. Bowman and McDowell and Logano all trying to finish their laps. Suarez didn't get the job done with the bubble, but that is a huge turnaround. Much needed lap right there, getting back inside the top ten. Good job, Daniel Suarez. Yeah, going from 17th all the way up to all the way up to ninth. It will change the start of his day. This could be the last best chance to bump in Austin Cindric. That's the save of the day. Did Bowman not make it. Steps up more. Six. Well, that'll officially lock Ford out from any cars in the final ten. That is true. Byron Chastain and Elliott and Chevy's Bell and Truex in Toyotas will join the group B. All right, so William Byron tops the charts just as he did in practice for Group B, also in qualifying for Group B. 
Uh, Christopher Bell was second, Ross Chastain third, Chase Elliott fourth, Martin Trick Jr. fifth. So those will be the five drivers from this group that will have a shot to go for the pole. Uh, there will be a little bit of a cool down period for the next several minutes, and then we will get the five minute uh, pole qualifying session up and running for these NASCAR Cup Series drivers. We're a little over an hour away from the start of our NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series live commentary stream. They'll be racing at Coda today as well as the NASCAR Xfinity Series this weekend. Uh, so a triple header of action on the channel here for your Saturday NASCAR coverage. Again, uh, 1.30 Eastern time will be our start for that NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series stream. That stream is actually already up. Obviously not running with this one going on right now, but again at 1.30, a little over an hour from now, uh, we will start that one up. And then we will also have live commentary for the Xfinity Series race later this evening at 5 p.m. Eastern, a little less than five hours from right now. So uh, again, three streams on the day, a long Saturday of action here for NASCAR, but can't wait to spend it with you guys, give you the uh, commentary throughout the course of the day. Larson did go out and try again, but he did not get into the top five. Yeah, so Byron Bell, Chastain, Elliott, Truex will be the five drivers, and Truex picked up from lap one, uh, was sixth overall in this group, moved up just one spot to get him into the top ten. So the ten drivers going for the pole look like this now on the screen. Uh, Tyler Reddick, Ty Gibbs, Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, Corey LaJoy, William Byron, Christopher Bell, Ross Chastain, Chase Elliott, and Mark Truex Jr. Six Toyotas, four Chevys, and uh, no Fords have qualified in the top 10 this weekend. Uh, highest qualifying forward would have been Cindric, who was sixth in his group, so he'll start 11th. Means he was in group B. He'll be on the inside lane for the start of tomorrow's race. So Cindric will roll off 11th. And again, everybody positions 6 through 19 and 18 in group A, group B. Group A will be the outside lane position 6 through uh, 18, and then 6 through 19 in group A will be the uh, inside lane. Or, sorry, uh, inside lane for Group B. Outside lane is Group A. Apologize for that. I mean, Toyota's had the pole about covered this weekend, but William Byron was fastest overall in practice, even faster than Gibbs and Reddick, and he was slightly faster than both cars for the cup race at Coda, so we'll see if he can do it again. Be a good day for Hendrick Motorsports as far as pole qualifying goes. Kyle Larson already qualified on the pole for the NASCAR Xfinity Series race, so that took place yesterday uh, for practice of qualifying. The race will be today, but Larson will be starting up in front later this evening for the Xfinity Series race. We'll go out in one ten-minute session. Uh, run as few or as many laps as you want. Yeah, and the guys from from Group B are gonna wait because they gotta get their car. They want to get their car cooled off as much. So it'll be interesting to see if the Group A guys just go out. I think at this point you just want a clean lap. Try to hit it on the first one. Impressive run by Corey LaJoy. That's a good lap for them guys. Just keep getting better and better. It's an elite company. Josh. We're out here with Ryan Blaney. Ryan missed out on the following qualifying group, but talk to me about your day and what you learned about the car out there and the track. Um, yeah, nice to get like some more laps than usual. I need all the laps I can get. <laughs> struggling out here today, but um, yeah, Jack Legs, but our sport Mustang is I think it has speed in it. I just uh, I got to clean a lot of stuff up. So hopefully we can figure it out for tomorrow. I thought our race trim car was better than kind of being able to lay a fast lap down, so hopefully it kind of goes a little bit better tomorrow uh, as far as that side, as far as holding on uh, through the race, but uh, yeah, it was, it was fun to kind of go through the new sections of pavement to the old kind of how does your car transition to them, and, you know, not trying to cut the S's too much and get a penalty like you're judging inches, you know, and um, that's, that's fun, so I wish we were starting a little better tomorrow, but hopefully uh, we get tuned up. A lot of the guys are saying the same things. You are struggling out there. What, if anything, can you do to make sure you're a little more comfortable for tomorrow? I, I don't know. You know, I uh, it's a tough place. You know, it's a long racetrack, and there's a lot of time to be gained, a lot of time to be lost, and every little thing can kind of add up. So I think just looking at, you know, you're not trying to gain half a second in one corner. It's little tents each corner, you know, half tents that add up to a lot when you're running over two-minute laps. So um, hopefully uh, – 
you know, we can figure it out here. I can figure it out. Um, not a very good road course racer, uh, so I have to really study all this stuff of who's good and where they're beat me and then try to figure out what we need to do to the car to try to help me out. So it's a lot of studying, a lot more studying, honestly, at these places than I do at, at other places just because there's so many more corners. It's more technical, uh, but that's what makes it unique, and that's, um, that's what makes it tough. But the challenge is, is a fun part of it, so hopefully uh, hopefully I can get better as a driver tomorrow and not be uh, terrible like I was today. I always appreciate your time, right? Ryan Blaney will start 28. Fords shut out of the second round of qualifying here. Let's do it, Kevin. I'll go. No, you won't. No, you won't. All right, so when they come back from the commercial break, we should get right into this final qualifying session. Get five minutes for these 10 drivers to set the top 10 for the starting order of tomorrow's race. Dave Martin says Chase for the pole. He did pick up quite a bit for practice to qualify. Him and Denny Hamlin, I think, had the biggest gain uh, from practice to qualify. Martin Trex Jr. as well was uh, outside the top 20 in practice and was able to get in. Elliott wasn't quite as bad in practice as Truex and Hamlin, but uh, did better than them in qualifying. Had a faster lap than both of them there. Really, the only driver for Group B that I think has a decent shot at the pole is William Byron. I feel like the rest of them from uh, Group B, based off of lap times, both in practice and qualifying, just seemed a little bit more off from that of Reddick and Gibbs. I think it's going to be between Reddick, Gibbs, and Byron here for the pole. Three-headed coin. I wouldn't have had Reddick listed in there based off of practice being 12th, but again, he picked up quite a bit. Got right back up there with his Toyota teammates. A lot of drivers could win. They could keep it clean. Yeah, yeah, clean laps is huge. It's a long race. A lot of laps uh, around this road course. Very long road course at that. Very easy to make just one vital mistake. One spin uh, definitely could ruin your day, especially if it's in the final stage over the course of a very long green flag run. We're on a restart like we've seen in the past. Though, again, with the moving to the restart zone, I would imagine that the restarts will be more tame this year at Coda than what we've seen in the first three races here for the NASCAR Cup Series, really every series for that matter. We'll get to see that on the forefront of the truck in Xfinity race today. James Moore, thanks for tuning in. Like when Davey Allison was winning the only two road course races back in the day. Way too many road courses today. Um, I do think that they... I personally... I think they, they have a good amount of road courses. I think they have too many in the Xfinity series. There's, I forget what year it was. They had like eight of them, I think, like just a couple seasons ago. And they have axed a few of them since then. I know they're not racing at Mid-Ohio anymore. Um, they're also not racing at uh, – I don't think they're racing at Road America this year, are they? I think that's taken off the schedule. I know, obviously, it is for Cup. Uh, even the Cup Series had, I feel like, too many a couple of years ago. But you got to figure they're not going to Indy anymore uh, for the road course. They're going there for the Oval, and they aren't going to Road America. So I mean, that's I mean, granted, you can say that the Chicago Street Race kind of took over Road America. They had the Daytona Road Course at uh, those two years, I should say, 2020 and 2021. They don't have that anymore. So there are way more road courses like two, three, four years ago. But now I feel like five's a good number. Um, it's not too many in my opinion because I do think you need variety on the schedule. Um, and obviously this is a more strictly oval racing series. I get that. Um, I do like that there's more than two. I, a lot of fans were clamoring for more than two for the longest time. I can remember there was this uh, show on Speed Channel back in the day. It was like a trivia-based show. It had Rutledge Wood, Kyle Petty on it. Um NASCAR Smarts was the name of it. I had to think of the name. But anyway, at the end of the show, essentially the preface of it, they would ask a fan-oriented question. And I could always remember like one of the episodes being, and this was like late 2000s, um, you know, what 
would be the next like type of NASCAR track to be added to the schedule. Like fans are like what they wanted more of essentially. And road courses was the answer to that question. Or like four options, whatever. So uh, pretty much from like that day forward, and then like into the NASCAR like uh, media sides of things, like from YouTube. When I started watching NASCAR YouTube channels about 2018, was kind of like interactive more in like comment sections and stuff. I feel like more fans were clamoring for more road courses now. NASCAR push forward probably put too many, but I do feel like more than two is a good uh, solution to that. And it does keep from like road course ringers coming from like elsewhere coming in and just dominating every single road course race. You don't see that as much anymore. I know Shane Van Gisberg is going to be a contender um, for a good finish tomorrow, and he won the Chicago Street Race yesterday. But even like that had gone away for a pretty long time. I mean, you got to figure it's been. 10 plus years since Marcus Ambrose was winning road course races in the Cup Series won Pablo Montoya. So uh, you don't really have that anymore. And although, yeah, AJ Allmendinger came from an open wheel background, but he was in the Cup Series for a long time, even before he got his first win. So, um, and obviously winning now at the Xfinity and even last year on the Cup level in a road course. So it, it doesn't. As far as cup regulars go, they are definitely competing for wins more often, and it's hard for these outside drivers to run well because these cup drivers are getting better at road courses with the number of road course races that they've had, uh, especially with this new car when you consider the fact that, you know, overall it's kind of new for everybody. I think that kind of helped SVG a little bit out last year too. If this was a cup car from like the Gen 6 year, I don't think SVG would have ran as well as he did at the Chicago Street Race. Nor do I think we could have ran the Chicago Street Race because this card fits road courses better. But yeah, they, uh, needless to say, I think that there's a good number of road courses. I think like four or five is a good number. Uh, six or seven like we had. Maybe a little bit too much, but I think four or five is a sweet spot there. My personal opinion. Jamie M., thanks for tuning in also. SVG was in Group A, and he was sixth overall, so he will be starting 12th tomorrow. Got cars on the track right now. Final round. Um, I thought it was five minutes. Apparently, it's ten minutes. So this final round of qualifying, ten minutes. All the Group A drivers on the racetrack right now. The Group B drivers probably going to be at the tail end of this interval as they continue to try to cool down the engines. Uh, four cars on the racetrack right now. Denny Hamlin, Ross Chastain. Corey LaJoy, and I couldn't tell who else was out there. It looked like William Byron's out on the racetrack. And he was in Group B. Byron going out pretty early. Maybe so that way he can run a lap now and then try to run another lap later in this run if he doesn't have a lap time that he would like to have. So again, Reddick, Gibbs, Wallace, Hamlin, LaJoy, Byron, Bell, Chastain, Elliott, and Truex are the 10 drivers trying to go for the pole. Big moment coming off of turn 19 there. It looked like for Ty Gibbs, as he starts his timed lap, looked like he might have went out a little wider than he would have wanted to. Gibbs fastest through Group A practice and second overall in practice. He was second, though, in Group A qualifying. Got beat out by Tyler Reddick, who wasn't even in the top 10 overall in practice about an hour before. So we'll see. 54, 45, and the 24, I definitely think are going to be the favorites here to try to go for the pole. Two of those are making the time lap right now. Uh, Byron got to complete his lap first. So he'll be the first to post a lap time. Pretty good uh, lap so far for Willie B. Really hooked uh, that grippy spot there in turn eight, the right side tire, trying to get it down pretty much as close to the grass as possible. Maybe a little bit on it. You kind of want half your tire on and half of it off. It really hooks and a little bit of asphalt seaming in between the uh, actual pavement and the grass or dirty area. Slightly above that, you're losing lab time, and too far below it, you're going to slip and slide a little too much also. It's 
going to be tough to tell right now simultaneously of all the 24 and the 54 are on the track at the same time and no other lap times posted of exactly who's going to have the better lap here. No way of tracking it, at least on uh, Fox's side for the graphics. Uh, Byron going to post a lap time of a 2 minute 9.636. That is faster than Ty Gibbs by 16 one thousandths of a second. Chastain is timed in third. So William Byron, top of the charts. A 209.64 for Byron, 209.65 for Gibbs. LaJoy with a 210.46 now times in ahead of Chastain. Chastain with a 210.67 in fourth. Reddick uh, and Hamlin might have had either a hiccup on their lap time or they're just starting an actual timed lap here. Not sure what happened, but they were... Pretty far down on the leaderboard by lap time-wise. I don't think those laps are going to count for them. They're probably going to try to get another one in at least. Christopher Bell is also on the racetrack right now. So still waiting on six drivers to post a respectable lap time yet. So those four at the top of the leaderboard right now, I'm pretty sure their qualifying efforts will be done. Uh, we're down under four minutes to go. It's not really a lot of time to cool the engines off. Yeah, Reddick had a big slide on his lap. Right rear was yawed out quite a bit. Uh, that's what led to the two minute 19.4, two minute 19 second point four seven seconds. For Reddick. So maybe that is going to be Reddick's lap. Just had a major hiccup. Now, I still don't know what happened to Denny Hamlin running the 227. I don't know if he maybe spun or something. I mean, to be 17 seconds, 18 seconds off, I would imagine he probably had some sort of a off track moment or a wide moment. Some sort. Bell tracking about a tenth off for the pole. As he just gets his lap started through turns 19 and 20. Now into the heavy braking zone in turn one. Going to go through the bumps. And we'll see how he sets himself up for the S's. Looks like Martin Truex Jr. is on the track not that far in front of him. Drex getting out of the way for Bell. Pretty respectable lap so far for Bell. How he gets through turn 8, though, can really make or break this lap. Working up on that corner right now. Oh, boy, big slide. Coming up off of turn 7. Turn 8, pretty solid there. Lap time still doing fairly well. He's got that long straightaway coming up after turn 11. Dodging these slower cars may uh, may hurt him a little bit as well. Hopefully they stay out of his way. They appear to be doing so thus far. Bell really lost a lot of ground through the breaking of turn 11. He's getting some of that back down the straightaway, which tells me that he... Probably braked a little earlier to equate for more straightaway speed by getting into the gas a little sooner than what Byron might have done. But uh, now into the stadium section of the racetrack for Bell. Still pacing about a tenth or two off. And that's going to be tough to pick up in another corner. Just getting out of turn 18 is Bell, and he'll be third. 209.93 for Bell. He's third overall in qualifying, and he's almost three full tenths behind William Byron, who is still on the top spot. 
Three more cars have to complete a lap. Martin Truex Jr., Chase Elliott, and Bubba Wallace. And we'll see if anybody who has completed a lap already will try to complete another before the time expires. Uh, Denny Hamlin's back out there again. And Bubba Wallace going to go for a spin. Not sure where at on the racetrack that was, but Wallace just spun during his qualifying lap. Tyler Reddick is out there trying to put together a better lap time, obviously, than he already had. Definitely should be able to at least pick up on the speed chart. I don't know if he's going to have anything for Gibbs or Byron having an extra lap on his tires, but we'll see. Big hop through turn seven. Pretty good through turn eight. It's going to be close. I mean, so far, so good for Reddick. Can he get to Byron's lap time? Nobody's ran a faster lap than Byron through practice or qualifying so far. It doesn't matter what session or practice or what session of qualifying. Ty Gibbs is back out on the track trying to run another lap for the pole as well. The 10-minute time clock has expired, but the drivers who have already started their lap can finish them still. So Gibbs trying to give it another go at the pole. Tyler Reddick trying to have another lap as well. And I do believe William Byron is also back out on the racetrack, but his lap time doesn't seem to be anywhere near what his first lap was. Uh, Truex is still on the racetrack trying to complete a lap, but he is well off of his original lap time as well. His lap time, I should say, from the first session. Seems to have dropped off exponentially. Truex is 7th on our leaderboard. Tyler Reddick times in 3rd with a 209.82. Jumps just ahead of his Toyota teammate Christopher Bell. Right behind Gibbs. Gibbs still out on the racetrack trying to finish out. Getting through turn 15. Couple more corners to go for Ty Gibbs. He's tracking in the green to get the pole. He's the last driver on the track. Time has already expired. It's going to be between Gibbs and Byron for the pole. Gibbs is already second. And he picked up, but only picked up one one thousandth of a second. So Ty Gibbs picked up one one thousandth of a second from his first lap to his second. And William Byron is going to get the pole here at Circuit of the Americas for tomorrow's Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. It was a close one. Very close. A 129.636 for Byron. A 129.651 for Ty Gibbs. 15 one thousandth of a second was the difference between Byron's pole lap and Gibbs's second lap. That he ran, he did pick up, but couldn't pick up enough. And it looked like for a minute there, into the final couple of corners, that he had a realistic shot of beating Byron. That's how close it was. So your top 10 for the start of tomorrow's race, William Byron again on the pole, Ty Gibbs second, Tyler Reddick will be starting on the inside of row two, Christopher Bell on the outside, Row 3, Corey LaJoy, Ross Tastain. Great job by LaJoy qualifying top 5 today. Uh, Mark Jerks Jr., Denny Hamlin, Row 4, and Row 5, Chase Elliott and Bubba Wallace. Wallace went for a spin uh, in his qualifying lap. Hamlin did pick up from his first lap as well, but not enough. Only got to 8th on the leaderboard. And uh, that wraps up qualifying. So the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race will begin at 1.30 Eastern. So again, 1.30 Eastern, we will have NASCAR 
Craftsman Truck Series action for you guys right here on the channel. Our Xfinity coverage will begin at 5 p.m. Eastern later on today. That concludes our practice and qualifying live stream for the NASCAR Cup Series. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, we'll be back at it again for next week on next Saturday's edition of Practice and Qualifying, but still three more streams to go yet this weekend. Two more today. Can't wait to bring you the coverage. I'll see you guys in a little less than an hour for our next stream. Hit that like button on your way out. If you haven't yet, subscribe for more NASCAR content, live commentary streams like this every NASCAR race weekend, NASCAR Truck Xfinity Cup Series races, as well as cup practice and qualifying as we are on the road to 5,000 subs. Uh, we are getting very dangerously close to that number, and uh, hopefully we get there here sooner rather than later. See you guys in a little bit for some NASCAR Truck Series racing.